Okay, and we are live if everything is connected correctly. So welcome to the stream. We got an exciting Veronic Guardian locals for you today, PGD format. Now, PGD is one of those sort of like unlimited formats or fake formats, however you want to call them, uh, where basically uh, we're playing uh, kind of like Fiverr format, um, if you're familiar with Fiverr format. But we're adding the cards from Pharaonic Guardian to that because Pharaonic Guardian came out. And there wasn't immediately a list that sort of limited the cards from it. So we're sort of seeing what would happen if, you know, you're playing Fiverr format, uh, you know, using the July 2003 list. And then the cards from Pharaonic Guardian came out into the card pool. Uh, what would that do to the format? So uh, that's what we're playing here today. Uh, we've got nine players so far. And, uh, you know, if there are any last minute signups, I'm going to, you know, if there's uh, anyone who's just like says, hold it, hold it, you know, let me sign up right now. Uh, then I'll add you in, but, um, in a minute I'm going to start. So, uh, we'll get right into the action, you know, get, get going with that. Um, but it should be a lot of fun. And yeah, Ben also, let's go for the tournament to start. So yeah, it will be starting very, very soon. Uh, I'm going to give it just one minute. So at 5.02, um, you know, that's when I'll start. Uh, but we got the the competitors here, a you know good lineup of competitors, all very good players in these formats. So uh, I'm excited to dive in and see how it works. And many of these are familiar faces from the past tournaments as well. So, okay, uh, it is 5.02. I'm going to shuffle the seeds, and I always do it twice, uh, you know, just in case there's some sort of non-randomness there. Um, and we're going to start the tournament here. And, uh, okay, it looks like we've got our bracket set up. So it looks like Wames has the buy here. So they will be... Um, waiting around for one round, uh, to see the winner of Chef Steph Curry and Soul. Uh, but I'll share the, uh, I should, you know, I should share it in the, uh, the Discord there. That's where we hold all these events, the locals and stuff, in the YGO from Zero Discord server. Uh, link is in the description of the stream if you want to join yourself. Uh, we hold the locals there every week. We also hold monthly tournaments as well. So if you want to play games in these formats, uh, then, you know, that's the best place to do it. But yeah, uh, as Ben L says, so many staples are out of the game, like Ring of Destruction, Mirage of Nightmare, etc. A lot of good stuff. Uh, and also, James Arnold, woo, go Wames. Yeah, I'm rooting for Wames. I'm rooting for everyone, honestly. Uh, you know, I think it's just cool to see people playing these tournaments. And, uh, you know, we also keep track of how many uh, locals that everyone has won. And Wames has actually not won one yet, uh, although they have been in a couple. So it would be awesome if they managed to take home the W for PGD. So uh, let's dive into Dueling Book here. That's where we host the games. Uh, that's where, you know, we play them because, um, you know, Master Duel is good, but it doesn't quite support uh, old formats like this. So, um, you know, we're just going to dive into it on DB. So it looks like uh, it's off to a good start. Mirage Nightmare was fired on a Rage part here. This card, he's at three copies. It's pretty busted in this format, but Dump Trek used an MST to clear that up um, to get rid of that. Change of Heart on the set. It's a Don Zalug, so that's pretty good for Rage there. They get to take that and attack in for 14, but Dump Trek has a Ring of Destruction, which is at three copies in this format. So expect to see that coming down a lot more than you would in other formats here. Make games go a lot quicker. Uh, than you might otherwise expect there. I'm also going to join the um, the voice chat on the Discord server. I like to sort of uh, talk with people uh, on the Discord, you know, get people in here uh, talking about the games and the formats. I feel it's, it's a good way to sort of build community. Um, so uh, that's what we're doing there. And uh, it looks like both players, it looks like Rage just drew into another Mirage there. Uh, and it looks like they don't have the MST for it this time uh, or a Raigeki Break or anything like that. I'm pretty sure Regeki Break is out this format as well. It's just there are so many other good cards in the format that you might not necessarily want to play it. So they did pitch a Sinister Serpent there along with some hand rips. So honestly, that's not the worst thing to lose uh, if you're a Rages here because like Dumpfrack's got one card in hand. So like the Forceful and Duo aren't really going to do the most here. Now, if the set is something like, you know, uh, saying Inner Witch, then obviously Duo would be kind of cracked uh, in that scenario. But it looks like it's just a Serpent. So... Uh, that's a little bit unfortunate for Dump Truck. It raises in a pretty good position, even though they did have to pitch with the Mirage. Um, and you never really want to fall behind on life points in this format because Ring is at three. So that means that things can get very explosive very quickly. Um, Ben also says, let's see if I can defeat Hoy. Yeah, that'll be an exciting game. We'll jump into that, uh, after this one, uh, after we at least watch the first game of this match here. Uh, there also might be a fair amount of draws in this locals because Ring of Destruction can cause draws. That is something it can do. 
um, because this is the pre rata version of Ring of Destruction, so it doesn't have the whole, like, during your opponent's turn, you know, do all this stuff. Uh, it basically just reads, like, you know, you can activate it whenever, um, and it destroys a monster in the field, and then both players take damage to the attack that that monster had while on the field. So, if it had buffs, then you can Ring of Destruction that monster with the buffs, um, and it can be pretty good in that regard. So, a Sure Priest coming down here, and erases a setting, too, just in case, like, Morphing Jar or something. It looks like a Reaper instead. Um, Reaper is kind of awkward in this format because Ring of Destruction can clear, but if your opponent's using Ring of Destruction on the Reapers instead of on, you know, one of your more powerful monsters, that's probably fine. Uh, and yeah, Dumpbrook's just short getting saying, like, you're gonna discard the Gemini Elf. There's no reason, uh, to discard the Sinister Serpent there. Um, so I think that, you know, makes sense. Um, and Gemini Elf is kind of an annoying card. 1900 attack can beat over, like, Tomato and stuff like that. So, uh, I get why that happened. Um, and yeah, no Mirage drawing erases into more cards here, but they got a full back row there. So, uh, you know, if Harpies or Heavy Storm comes down, then that's going to be pretty good for Dump Truck, of course. Um, but you know, they might not have the Harpies. They might not have the Heavy. Uh, Painful Choice could maybe get them into those sorts of things. And Erase is just going to let that go through. Um, I'm not really sure what the sends off Painful are in this format. They're, I mean, so... In certain formats, there's, like, a set of five that you generally send off Painful. Like, the hand rips are generally good to send off the Painful because, like, drawing them late in the game is not really the best. So, it's something that your opponent probably does not want to give you. And that basically forces them into the two options that you send uh, in addition to the hand rips. So, generally, that is the correct choice to send to the trio in a lot of these early formats. And then you, like, pick the other two based on... Uh, what you might be looking for. Sinister Serpent is already in Dump Truck's hand. A lot of people use Painful basically to Foolish Burial for Sinister Serpent. I'm not really a fan of doing that in most cases, um, but it can come up. It looks like the last two are going to be Double Mirage here. One ST gone. Oh, it looks like uh, Razor's going to let Dump Truck have the Confi. I guess, uh, you know, we know that the Serpent is in Razor's hand already. So, and also we know about the Assure Priest too. So, like, Confi is not really... Oh, okay. No Assure Priest? But, oh, it's... Oh, they haven't added back the Serpent. Okay. I thought they added back the Serpent, but... Um, yeah, I mean, both of those monsters are kind of, like, equivalent. They're both just beaters that can attack in here. So, I think that makes sense. Um, but yeah, Regeki coming down on the Reaper. So, that will clear that. And then, is Razor just going to attack in here? Or are they going to summon out, like, the Ashura Priest? Or, I guess, the Gemini Elf and attack in that way? Uh, plays in a TT a bit, but it looks like they're going for Dust Tornado on one of the back row here. Uh, hitting this set, I forget if that's the first or the second set there, but it looks like they hit a Scapegoat. So maybe it would have been better to go for Dust Tornado before going for the Raigeki, but I guess they're playing around Imperial Order, which to me signals that they probably don't have another Dust Tornado or an MST, um, because otherwise they would have just gone for the Dust Tornado before going for Raigeki. So um, these are the sort of reads that you can like make in this sort of format, um, because you know, there are certain things, certain lines of play that make more sense than others. And if your opponent does one and not the other, then you can be like, well, okay, why would they do that? Assuming that they're playing optimally, which you generally should do, right? Like it, you could just assume your opponent's playing bad, but generally, uh, first of all, that's disrespectful to your opponent. And second of all, like it doesn't help you if you actually face like very good players. And Aratus is a very good player here. So Dump Truck should be assuming like, okay, um, Aratus is a good player. So what does this mean that they have or don't have? And you can see here, they're not using like MST on their own Mirage, which means, again, it's sort of confirming they don't have the MST for the Mirage. Uh, unless they're like really holding the MST, maybe they're trying to bluff to Dump Truck that they don't have MST or Dust Tornado here. But there isn't really much reason to do that, especially because two Mirages are out of Dump Truck's deck. Um, IO is still in deck, like Snatch Deal is still in deck. Um, but either way, like those are not really the best things to bluff, I think, so... Uh, or to, like, bluff against to force your opponent to go for it. So, um, yeah, I think that this uh, can be pretty clearly a sign that uh, Aratos did not have the MST online now. But looks like uh, Dumpark has another Reaper set, so this Reaper will probably just attack into a token here. Um, Aratos could have Ring in the back row to pop the Reaper, potentially. Maybe that's why they went for this ordering of attacks, because they figured the Gemini Elf would get over the set, and then they just ring the token, attack in with the uh, Reaper to rip the last card out of hand. Maybe they had the read that the set was a Serpent, um, because they do know that Dump Truck has the Serpent in hand. So that is something that they could have done. But uh, it looks like they're going to go for Graceful here, draw in three, pitch in two. Um, and we'll have to see 
what they actually draw there, they're going to pitch the Serpent probably because like, you know, you always want to pitch the Serpent off the Graceful unless they're playing like a meta strategy like Metamorphosis, which does come out in Pharaonic Guardian. So you could potentially meta the Serpent away into a Thousand Eyes Restrict. Maybe target the Reaper that Aratus has. That'll, um, I think that will actually not pop the Reaper. So maybe that's not the best choice, but you can always attack the Restrict into like the Tomato, take 1100 and then suck up another monster later. But um, probably not the best course of action. It is very interesting, though, to see what uh, they're ultimately going to do here. Um, ah, rip, we had so and just just missing the locals uh, 10 minutes late. Uh, don't worry, Yarman, hopefully you should be able to join the next one. But yeah, this was like uh, in, in advertising this locals, I was a bit like haphazard. Um, like normally I, I put the I, I have people vote on the times that work best for them. That's why this is at 5 p.m. EST on a Friday uh, as opposed to sometime later in the night because this won in the options there. Um, but when I initially posted the announcement, I didn't have the the time voting there. So, like, uh, it, it's a bit, uh, you know, it was, it was a bit haphazard and, like, a bit, like, last minute uh, in some ways. Um, but luckily, we still had a good turnout. Nine people is a respectable turnout for a locals of a format that is, like, basically no one plays this, right? If you play old formats like this, they're going to be playing the more official formats. Uh, things like Yada format or Fiber format, if you want to play a format around PGD. Um, so, you know, like, I, I feel like uh, it, having nine people for a format like this is a very good sign. And I'm, I'm really happy that we can have these locals here to do that. Uh, Harpy's coming down, clearing two of the macro, clearing a Reborn and a Snatch. That is a very, very good hit there. Uh, and Snatch on the Reaper will clear that away. And now I believe the last card known, to, oh no, Serpent's Engraved. So yeah, Exile's just coming down there. And actually that will be lethal, I think. Or that's 3,600. Uh, dump truck was at 4,200 maybe, uh, or maybe they lost another thousand here. Oh, I don't know. Either way, it was not a good spot for dump truck to be in. So they were probably going to lose that game just in terms of card advantage, at least. So, uh, very exciting game there. Now let's dive into the game of Hoy versus Ben Labs that, uh, Ben L mentioned earlier. Uh, and it's still in game one as well. So I expected this format to be a lot quicker than other formats, but it looks like, uh, we've been having some grindy games here potentially. Uh, rat attacking into Sangan. So Sangan will be able to search out a card here. Uh, it looks like there's a token in the extra monster zone. Just keeping track of something. Um, not quite sure what is, oh, keeping track of Reckless Greed. Reckless Greed, very interesting card there. Um, so yeah, Reckless Greed can draw you into cards. It is at three in this format. Um, so that's very interesting uh, of a choice. Not many people, I think, are playing it, but it is pretty cool that it's around. So it looks like Hoy will not be drawing for turn here. Uh, and they're only at 400 life points, so it's not looking good for them. That's the downside of Reckless Greed, that you don't get to draw into things. So uh, a bit of an awkward spot to be in, for sure. And uh, that Swords is, is still up. It's, it's still counting down, I believe, um, even though Imperial Lore is up. So, you know, I, I think that the Swords doesn't go to Grave if Order's up, but I don't think it matters because I think when Order expires, then it goes to Grave. Yeah, yeah, the, the Swords is still up um, because the Order is still up, so it's preventing it from going to Grave. Um, it, it's a weird interaction that doesn't often come up because in this in these formats with Io, um, it, like, you generally don't play Swords because, uh, you know, Swords is just kind of outclassed by almost everything else in the format. Uh, and there's so much spawn trap removal. There's triple MST, there's Harpy's Feather Duster, there's Heavy Storm. Uh, so, yeah. Um, but realistically, the Swords does not matter at this point because uh, Ben Labs is in a very, very commanding position uh, with that uh, IO. So, yeah. Um, this is going to be really tough for Hoy to claw their way back from. But, uh, yeah, Swords sticks around. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter here too much. Um, but I mean, I mean, it doesn't matter here really. Like, I don't know what Hoy can really do to get back from this position. I mean, maybe they've got a Reaper set. Maybe Reaper will help them stall a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very tough. I, I don't know, uh, what they can really do to get around this. Uh, they're going to attack him with Bazoo. It is indeed the Reaper. So Reaper will at least keep them alive for a little bit longer. But again, like, I, I don't know what you do in this situation. That's really tough stuff. And as a note, you, um, if you activate something like Change of Heart or Snatch Shield, even under IO, it will target the Reaper, and thus the Reaper will still pop itself. So that is something that Ben Labs can do to clear the Reaper 
uh, even if the IO is up. But it looks like they're dropping the IO to draw off charity, or at least attempt to. Hoy's thinking about that, but they're going to let that go through. Maybe they've got Solemns. Um, if they've got IO in the back row, they'd probably just fire IO, although they might be saving it because they can't keep IO up. Um, and so maybe they're saving it for something that can actually clear Reaper. The issue with that is, again, if Ben Labs draws something like Change of Heart or Snatch Steel, um, then it won't matter if IO goes up because what matters is that the Reaper will be targeted. So uh, MST hitting the new set there, hitting a ring. So that is a game winning MST or maybe not game winning, but, uh, at least keeps Hoy in the game here. Um, so that is a very, very good hit off the MST. And, and I mean, Hoy probably knew, like, if that's ring, I lose. And ring is at three in this format. So I just got a MST the back row there. Um, so I think that made a lot of sense. Yeah, tough tough spot indeed. I, I'm not really sure exactly how they can get out of this. And let's also check what they've used up in Grave here. Um, they haven't used up a Raigeki or a Darkhold. The issue with doing that is that then Ben Lops gets a search off the Witch. So, you know, that's not necessarily a surefire way out of this scenario. Yeah, this is, this is tough. They're going to tribute off the Witch for a Jinzo. Now, Witch can get a search, maybe searching out like Exiled Force or just some other way to pop the Reaper there. Um, but this is just going to be pretty rough. I mean, I assume they're playing Exiled since they are on Rat and Rat can go into Exiled. Um, yep, they are just going to search at the exile there. And now basically Hoy has one turn, uh, to turn this game around because, uh, I mean, if they don't, uh, if they don't have a way to deal with this, then it's going to be pretty bad. It looks like, uh, Ben Labs is going to banish three for the Bazoo here, buffing that up a little bit. Uh, Bazoo is pre errata, so you can banish anything from Grave, not just monsters in this format. Um, so, you know, that is coming up here. They're going to banish uh, some Graceful, a Harpies, and a Witch. Looks like they're going to switch the Rat to Defense as well. With Fiber Jar in Grave, they don't really need to worry about a Fiber Jar shuffling back everything here. Um, so, you know, they can just banish those cards there. But yeah, not looking good for Hoy at all. The Jinzo shuts down a lot of traps uh, that Hoy might want to use here. So yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily know how they're getting out of this. Especially because Exile is coming down next turn to pop the Spirit Reaper there. So yeah, not looking good. Hoy's checking Grave. They can't have Reborn left. They can't use Premat. I'm not really sure. Maybe they're seeing what they've got left in deck. But, yeah, it's a tough spot for them for sure. I don't know what they can draw here. Or have. Like, this is just rough. It looks like change on the set. Okay, so maybe hoping that it's like a Fiber Jar or something. Uh, and if it is Fiber Jar, that could potentially get them back in the game, but 400 life points is very, very risky to be at. So, you know, uh, I feel like here... Okay, it looks like it's just a rat, so that won't help. Yeah, I mean, they could have taken the Bazoo to get rid of the Jinzo, but, like, this means that they probably don't have... Yeah, Mirror Force is engraved, so it wouldn't have mattered there. And, um... Yeah, they just had to pray that the set was something, but it looks like the set was not, and that will be the end of Game 1. So, yeah, a bit of a tough spot to be in, but uh, they survived for longer than expected there. So, uh, good for them. Uh, oh, it looks like... Uh, are Ratos and Dump Truck done? Uh, did something happen with their game? I don't see them here. So, maybe they maybe they finished. Did they put it in as well? No. Okay, so... Uh, I can check on Discord, and I don't see it. But uh, maybe they're just... Uh, maybe they had to rehost. Or, oh, no, it's just down here. Okay, so the Hoy and Ben Labs game just got put at a different spot in the uh, order there. But anyways, looks like we've got Radrago versus History of YJ1. Radrago's won at game one here. It looks like History of YJ1 is on Hayabusa for some reason. Um, that, That's an interesting choice in this format. I feel like in a format with Triple Ring of Destruction, Hayabusa is pretty bad. But I guess what you could do is if you're playing like Trunades and Heavy Storm... Uh, or Harpies, what you do is you, like, uh, go for the high Hayabusa, you buff it up a bunch, and then you attack in for a bunch of damage, and then you can use your own ring to pop the high Hayabusa and kill your opponent that way. That is something you could do. Uh, it just feels like a very gimmicky strategy that's not necessarily the best. I mean, Hayabusa's coming down here and gonna try and attack in for 25, but if Riot Dragon has Ring of Destruction here, that's the end of the game, right? Because it pops Hayabusa, deals 3,000 to History of YGO1. So, yeah, Mirror Force coming down, so it looks like no ring. 
Um, but still, that's a two-for-one trade, which is, like, the flaw with Hayabusa is that, like, when you buff it up with equips and stuff, if that Hayabusa does get cleared by one card, that is a, you know, multiple card for one card trade, which is generally not the best trade in the world to make. So, yeah, rough stuff there for sure. Uh, and it looks like, uh... Confiscation's coming down to rip a card out of History of YG1's hand. It looks like Radrag did not draw off Mirage last turn. Uh, so maybe they used it earlier and they just got a full hand. Uh, that's definitely impossible. But uh, Confi coming down and hitting a Snatch deal here. And that's going to be pretty good. Looks like they've got Despair. So Acts of Despair, probably. Uh, premature Burial, United Stand, and Raigeki. So that potentially sets up an OTK with high boost in next turn if Raigeki does not draw a way to out that. But again, you know, there are many, many ways to out that sort of thing in this format. And History of Waiju 1's only at 2,400 life points, which is kind of rough for them, for sure. Another Graceful coming down here as well. Graceful is at 2 in this format, uh, which makes it pretty wild. Uh, another thing contributing to how fast these games go and how explosive they can be is these multiple Gracefuls coming down. And that is, that is rough stuff for uh, History of Waijo 1. The game might just be over here. Um, pitching a Mirage, because, you know, they've already got a Mirage up. Uh, and also they've got far more than four cards in hand. And a Jinzo here. Now, uh, Zalu coming down here as well to try and rip a card out of the hand. This could be pretty disastrous for History of Waijo 1 here. It looks like Scapegoat is coming down as well. Uh, so that can pair well with the United We Stand. But, uh, yeah, Scapegoat coming down. So that will be four tokens on the field. Um, so, you know, Zalook will have to attack into one of them. And uh, it looks like they're getting stuck on the orange token. Um, but, yeah, it looks like they got the, the yellow there. So um, I, mean, I guess they're both kind of orange, right? But, like, one is more yellow. One is more, like, reddish orange. So, um, yeah, which which Scapegoat is your favorite, uh, chat? I, I've always been partial to the blue one. Just because it's, like, front and center. Um, I think it's kind of neat. But, uh, I mean, they're all great, right? Like, you can't go wrong with any of those goats. Uh, they're all the goat. So, it it's always fun to see. But it looks like uh, History Rider 1 has a graceful of their own. Now they can pitch two. Um, we know some of their combo. Um, so it's unclear exactly what they'll want to pitch here. It looks like they're going to pitch the Act of Despair and a Fiber Jar. Uh, saying, no, I don't want to shuffle up the game because I'm running out of, uh, cards here. So... Uh, it looks like MSC coming down, and it's going to hit a call, which is going to bring back a Jinzo here. Um, so Jinzo will stick around because the call will be destroyed, but Jinzo negates the trap effect that would destroy the Jinzo after the call is destroyed. So um, that means that Jinzo will be here, complicating the OTK a little bit. Oh, but History Wider 1 says, thank you. Going for change of heart on the Jinzo, so maybe the OTK will not quite be as complicated as we think here. Um, going for Premat as well to bring back the Hayabusa. Now, it's unlikely that uh, Rad Drago has an MST here because they let the Mirage discard a card. I mean, they're just fine losing that card. Um, but Hayabusa is going to come back to field. Uh, Premat stays on field. Uh, that is important that Premat stays on field. Um, Raigeki coming down here to clear the Zalug. And uh, this might be the end of the game here, depending on what um, Rad Drago's got. It looks like a United We Stand here is going to come down. What's it going to equip to? It is going to equip to... Something. They need to decide what it equips to. They need to... Okay, it looks like it's going to equip to the Hayabusa. Uh, so that Hayabusa is at 5k here. So it's going to attack in. And uh, it looks like the hand is just Raigeki. And it, yeah, nothing there. So that will be the end of that game there. What MST would have ended uh, History Wadja 1's dreams there. But, you know, the MST was likely not in the back row given that... Uh, they let the Mirage discard a card. So, um, either way, I mean, they, I don't think they had ring in the back row there. So yeah, either way it was, it was probably fine. But, uh, anyways, let's dive into soul 65 versus chef Steph Curry. Uh, see how this game's going. It looks like soul won the first game and it looks like they're on Wang who's in the main Wang who's, or maybe not in the main, this could be in the side might mean that chef Steph Curry is on like scapegoats and stuff. looks like chef Steph Curry's on nightmare wheel, nightmare wheel, very interesting card here. I think burn is really, really good in PGD format. So this could be a burn deck. Um, and also, you know, that would, that would cook his opponents, right? Like, uh, suitable for the chef, you know? Um, but yeah, it looks like souls is going to set one and bring out a reaper and then attack into the set with the Dawn. It looks like it's going to hit a Fiber Jar here, so that's going to shuffle back everything. Um, yeah, it makes the Reaper Summon kind of awkward, but I get why uh, Chef went for it, because, like, 
I mean, if you hit in with the Reaper there, ripping the last card, or not the last card, but a card out of Soul's hand, then that's really good. Um, and even this Fiber isn't necessarily the worst thing in the world because you've got set up. You're likely going to draw into a ring if you're playing three ring. So, you know, this is probably going to work out fine for Chef Steph Curry. And it looks like everything's going to be a shuffle back for them as well. Williams is watching because this is the game, I believe, that, uh, lead yep, this is the game that leads into their game. So they're getting a bit of a hint as to what, uh, you know, both these players are on. In case they have to face them in the next game, which they will have to do for one of them. It looks like Chef Steph Curry is just going to set one pass. Uh, might mean that they drew a hand of all monsters. Might just mean that they're confident in that one card in the back row there. Maybe it's something like a uh, scapegoat or something like that. Um, that is easily chainable to like an MST. Uh, but it looks like a uh, gear freak is going to come down here, attack in for 18. And Chef Steph Curry is going to take that 18, dropping them down to 6,200. What is Soul going to do next? If they're playing gear free. They might be on blast with chain as well. Blast is kind of awkward in this format though. Because what can happen is if you use Blast on the Gear Freed to pop a card, then your opponent can chain ring and pop the Gear Freed. So ideally, you want to use Blast with chain and damage step to pop things because then your opponent can't respond to it uh, with the ring. But, uh, ooh, Mirage coming down here. So Mirage will potentially draw... Okay, it looks like right, Geki Break is coming down to pop the Mirage. Maybe. They could also pop something else instead. Uh, so if you are confident that Soul has like an MST or Raigeki break of their own set face down, then you could pop that and basically force Soul to discard potentially, but it looks like they're just going to pop the Mirage. I think that is the safe play. I think that's probably the correct play, especially when a Harpies is coming down next. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, hitting a Blast, which isn't going to do anything, uh, even if you use it on the Gear Freed, and a Reborn. So both those are pretty good hits here. Uh, I think Chef is in a pretty good position here, depending on what they've got in hand. Now, Gear Freed is just an annoying monster to deal with. It's got 1,800. That's a bit of a big, uh, you know, not butt, but like a bit of a big uh, attack to get over. It looks like Rhoda's going to come down to potentially bring out a monster to clear it. Now, this could be Goblin Attack Force, the Myra. Uh, those are both out. Could also just be Exiled Force to pop the Gear Freed that way. Uh, that is also a perfectly viable option. And it looks like they are just going to use the Exiled, pop the Gear Freed, uh, and will they have another back row to uh, protect themselves here? Oh, they've got Reborn. That's even better. So now they can go for Reborn here, target the Gear Freed, get back that Gear Freed. This makes it resilient to things like Snatch Deal. Um, it also is 1800, which is just annoying to deal with, and it can get in for a fair bit of damage. So I think that was a pretty good turn for Chef Steph Curry, and they're going to set one pass back to Soul. Now, wouldn't it be funny if Chef Steph Curry is also on Blast with Chain? That'd be kind of wild. Uh, then the Gear Freed is a major, major threat here. And they might be on it. They're on Rotas. So, you know, the Rota package could not just be for Exile Force or Dawn. It could also be for other things as well. Dark will come down on the Gear Freed. Kind of rough to see that. It looks like another Gear Freed is coming down, though. Uh, so that Gear Freed will attack in for 18. And Nightmare Wheel coming down on Gear Freed. Now, Nightmare Wheel is not an equip card. So it can actually be used on Gear Freed. And this is going to be kind of rough for a soul. They're going to take 500 during every one of Chef Steph Curry's uh, standby phases. Uh... Nightmare Wheel is not an equip. It's not an equip. It just targets a monster your opponent controls. Uh, it's not equipped because it can be used on set monsters as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, I can I can message Soul about this. Um, but, yeah, it, it's not an equip. Uh, yeah. Not an equip. Yeah. Uh, because equip cards can't be used on set monsters. And um, Nightmare Wheel can be used on a set monster. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's how it works. It's, it's a bit of a weird interaction for sure, but like, uh, wheel is just a very interesting card and I'm really glad to see it being represented here because, you know, in the last Yada tournament, uh, Alakia 2, who is a great Yada player, actually managed to win the tournament with a sort of like aggro burn deck that was also playing Nightmare Wheels. And so Nightmare Wheel definitely does have a lot of potential in these formats around this time. Um, so very, very cool to see it being used here on the Gear Freed. And it looks like Soul's going to set one here. Now, if that's another Nightmare Wheel in the back row, that could go pretty hard, just, you know, targeting the other set here. Uh, it looks like MST coming down for the Mirage, so that'll clear that. And uh, this is going to be a pretty good spot for Chef Steph to be in, because that's going to be another 500 damage to Soul. Um, they need to remember to take that 500. Will they remember? Will they not? I'm just going to let them know either way. Uh, if, if they don't. But, uh, 
Yeah, there it is. There it is. I figured it would be coming down soon, but um, always good to remember. It's it's tough to remember occasionally with those sorts of effects, but uh, good to remember. Uh, yeah, uh, it was at, the question was asked is which ones per turn, which is not ones per turn in this format. Okay, it looks like Dump Truck lost to Aratos, so Aratos will be moving on to the next round there. Looks like the the wheel is turning. Big wheel keep on turning, you know. Um, I'll just uh, go to a different tab there while that's loading up. But, oh my goodness. Uh, maybe it will work now? Maybe not. Maybe I just need to refresh the challenge. Uh, hopefully that works. But Fiber Yard getting flipped up. That will shuffle everything back. Ring is being used on the Gear Free to deal 1,800 more damage, uh, dropping this hole down to um, 1,300 here. So that's going to be pretty good. And, you know, Chef Steph Curry will drop down life points as well. But it looks like they're on a bit more of an aggressive burn deck. So, like, they probably can deal that last 1,300 damage to Soul before Soul is able to kill them. So uh, I think that's a good strategy there. Okay, there we go. And Aretos gets put in here at the winner of that match. And they'll be facing the winner of Food versus Blah. So uh, everything got shuffled back in here, but Soul's in a tough spot for sure. Now there are potential lines that could win Soul the game. You know, for instance, if they've got Goblin Attack Force plus, well, actually, I was going to say if they've got Goblin Attack Force plus Ring of Destruction, then they could summon out Goblin, attack him for 23, and then ring the Goblin. But then Soul would lose as well. So that'd just be a draw, not a win. Uh, they might want to go for that anyways, though, because uh, they're in kind of dire straits, you know. Doing a draw just to reset the game when you're already up a game can be a perfectly valid uh, strategy as well. So um, definitely an interesting situation to be in here for sure. Um, what would you do, chat? What Would would you go for the draw or would you... Uh... Ah, rip. Okay, it looks like Aretos cannot play anymore, so uh, Dump Truck will take the uh, spot there. Uh, unfortunate, but at least they got to play for uh, one of the things. Um, so yeah, rough. Um, but yep, uh, that is okay. Yeah, always unfortunate when something like that happens, but it can happen in these live events. So it looks like Goblin is coming down, and we might actually wind up in the situation that I mentioned, where um, Ring gets set as well, Ring goes on Goblin, and then they just go into a draw. So. That could definitely happen here. Um, it looks like uh, we're going to go into the main here. Uh, Soul might not have ring, or they could just be saving it for uh, if Chef has, like, a uh, book. But it looks like they do not have ring there. Quite unfortunate um, for Soul. Because this might be the end of the game, especially with a Graceful being able to fix it. So that way uh, you can potentially get an aggressive option on board there. So um, let's see what happens here with the Chef, Steph, Curry. Thinking about what to discard here for cost of graceful or not cost. It's an effect. It's part of the effect, but like it is the cost. It's just not the gameplay cost, right? Um, which is important when Dark Worlds come around, which will be coming up relatively soon. So um, look forward to that. Warrior format is almost done with coverage, which is kind of wild to think about. We're almost in GX, uh, which it, it's been quite a journey to get to GX. I mean, it's been like two years, I think, to get to GX. So very you know exciting to to almost be on the cusp of that and to be on the cusp of GOAT, which is one of the uh, great formats in Yu-Gi-Oh's history. So I'm really excited to dive into that. Um, I got some fun plans with that coming up, uh, you know, collabing with some GOAT YouTubers, uh, which should be pretty fun. So look forward to that. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it as well. Uh, but it looks like Chef cannot get too aggressive here to set in three, passing back to Soul. Uh, so if they've got a ring, then ring could be really good on that goblin there. Oh, actually it's not because ring, ring on goblin actually loses them the game. So, um, yeah, there's an awkward spot with the rings, you know, ring is, is at three, but, uh, when you wind up in a situation where both players are down low, um, it can be a bit awkward. So definitely a thinker here. What is Chef's Steph and Soul going to do here? Who is going to come out on top? Now, if Soul has a monster like Gearfreed or something like that that they want to summon out to sort of press the offensive, then if Chef has a ring, then that'll just be the end of games for Soul because uh, Chef fires the ring. Uh, that deals over 1,300 damage, uh, and so that will be fine. Um, but, uh, yeah, tough spot for Soul to be in for sure. Look that like they're just going to set one and uh, pass back to Chef's Steph. Now, that's another Fiber Jar. Then what they could do is actually they could flip up Fire Jar in their turn. Uh, oh, Nightmare Wheel on the set. That's very, very smart on Chef Chef Jerry's fart. Uh, now that monster can't be flipped up. 
Uh, and also, it will be dealing 500 damage to Soul every um, standby phase. So this puts Soul on a clock, even if Chef Chef can't just attack in. So uh, this is very, very good for them. And if it is Fiber Dart or something like that, uh, then that line of avenue is shut off for Soul right now. Now, if Soul draws into like MSC or Heavy or something like that, then that can clear the Nightmare Wheel and do stuff like that. But uh, yeah, looks like Bazoo is coming down, just trying to clear that Goblin. Get rid of that. Uh, this, to me, signals that they probably... Chef Steph probably doesn't have a ring in the back row either way. Um, because if they did have a ring, they'd probably just use it on the bazoo. But I mean, they could be trying to play around Book of Moon. Because Book of Moon is in this format. It is good counterplay to Ring of Destruction. So uh, it's good to keep in mind there. Um, let's see what Soul does. I, I don't know what how Soul's getting out of this. This is definitely a tough spot to be in for sure. Because Chef Steph kind of got inevitability from this point. So... Um, yeah, it's kind of tricky. At least you know that Chef Steph probably doesn't have Ring, or else they would have used Ring. Um, Reborn here coming down for the Goblins to attack over the Bazoo. Um, you know, Chef Steph could have banished three to buff the Bazoo up to 25. I think it makes sense why they didn't do that. Uh, Break coming down, targeting the Goblin there. Uh, getting rid of that, pitching a Rota. Um, yeah, I think this makes sense. Like, there was the line of attack of just, like, okay, letting the Goblin attack over the Bazoo, and then you, right, Geki break the set monster, and then you go for Rota to bring a monster to hand. You got the set monster on field, and then you attack in for a game. But I think this is more safe, um, because if that set is something like a Battle Trap or something like another Torrential or a Mirror Force or something like that, uh, then that play gets punched hard. And, again, you've got inevitability here, right? You just need to survive for one more turn, one more Souls turns, and then you win the game, because you've got Nightmare Wheel online, so... Um, so Chef Steph is in a perfectly fine position here, uh, and not buffing the Bazoo is also something that I think makes a lot of sense, because if Soul has Ring in the back row there, then Ring could pop the Bazoo after it's buffed up, and then cause a draw. And Chef Steph is in a winning position, they don't want to necessarily turn this into a drawing position, that's kind of what Soul wants to do instead here. Um, so Soul is going to think about this a bit. I'm not sure what exactly they can do here. I mean, if they've got MST or something, they got to MST the Nightmare Wheel or else they lose. Um, but tricky spot to be in for sure. Okay, it looks like uh, Blah won the other game. I, I didn't see anyone say it in the Discord. Um, but it looks like Dump Truck is hosting for Blah. So uh, that means that Blah must have won that game there. Um... So I'll put that in here. And now it's Blah versus Dump Truck. Okay, yeah, that'll just be the end of that game there. For Soul versus uh, Chef Steph Curry. So that's going to a game three. Very exciting. Uh, let me just check to make sure that was indeed... Okay, yeah, I don't see Food versus Blah, so I, I think that that is indeed the case. But we've got a Hoy versus Ben Lops here. Still on game two, and wow, this is a... This is a wild game state. <laughs> you don't generally find uh, game states with help o uh popping up all too often here. Um, yeah, this is some wild stuff here. This is wild. I mean, this is the sort of game state that uh, makes these games very, very fun. Uh, now, it looks like help o has been snatched stolen. So that means if Ben Labs actually attacked over the help o uh, then it will actually still work. So funnily enough, um, it will discard cards from your opponent's hand because it just says if it's destroyed by battle, not if it was destroyed by battle with your opponent's monster. So that is extremely funny here. Uh, that is, that is a uh, peak comedy, uh, in my opinion, because that snatch deal on the help of armor, uh, could be kind of rough. Looks like Ben Labs had a response. Are they playing disappear? Are they playing, uh, what are the, what are they playing that can respond to serpent? Uh, okay. I mean, I think Disappear is the main. Okay, Ring on the... Ring on what? Uh, Ring on Help Wimmer. Just clearing off the field. Uh, clearing the way for big damage here. Dealing 2k. I think that makes some sense. Um, yeah, dropping down Hoi to 3400 there. Um... Yeah. And uh looks like Hoy will add back that serpent. And they're in a rough spot. You know, they, they can stall for a bit, but it looks like they are uh 
They're, they're, I mean, they got a lot of cards, but like if those, oh, well, Regeki's going to be pretty good here, clearing away the board. Uh, now, Ben Labs does get a search off the Witch, so that is unfortunate for Hoy. Um, but it looks like it will clear double Momonga as well. And yeah, Witch will get a search here. So, Witch grabbing card from deck. What will it be? We must find out. What will it be? Looks like he's grabbing a Bazoo. Bazoo is going to be a pretty good monster to just keep the aggressive pressure going. You can buff that up to 2,500. Graceful coming down here as well with a Serpent in hand. That's pretty good. Uh, you go Graceful, Pitch Serpent, and uh, one other card that you don't necessarily need. But it really does reduce the cost of Graceful quite a bit. So, you know, pretty good combination here. And it looks like Hoy is thinking. They're going to pitch the Serpent, and they're going to pitch a Change of Heart, saying, I don't need this Change of Heart. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just going to do other things here. Oh, wow. Just straight up passing. That is a bit scary for Hoy. Now could mean that they've got a scapegoat set. Could mean that they've got a uh, Waboku set, but, uh, that is some scary stuff for sure. Or their hands just too good. Maybe they just don't want to commit anything to board because it's just all too good. Uh, that is definitely a possibility as well. Looks like Bazoo coming down here. Um, Bazoo probably buffing itself up a bit here because there's a full graveyard. So you can have a lot of cards to banish here for Bazoo. Buffing that Bazoo up to, well, I mean, we'll have to see exactly what it buffs up to, but um, like 1900 is enough for just getting in and firing ring on the Bazoo. Um, but it looks like they are just going to banish the full three to get it up to 2,500, attack in for 2,500. I think that makes sense. You might as well just go aggressive at this point. Scapegoat coming down here. Uh, will Ben Labs have an IO to stop that? Looks like that will go through. So Hoy will get four tokens here. But that's just a uh, sort of stopgap measure. Uh, if they don't have a way to stop whatever else Ben Labs is doing, then they might be in for a tough time. Yeah, no Raigeki or Dark Hole used up on Ben Labs' part. It looks like Sandan coming down here. That's interesting. Um, so Sandan is going to probably attack into Bazoo, but that's very risky into Ring. Because the thing is, if Ring gets fired here, right? Like, if, if Hoi crashes Sandan into Bazoo, and then a Ring comes down, then uh, Ring can pop the Bazoo, and Hoi will have taken 1,500, so they'd be at 1,900. And, uh, yeah, that would just kill him. So, that is a very scary spot to be in for Hoy. Uh, and Ben Sin, you know, just keep going. Keep going. Uh, attack into my Bazoo. I'm, I'm perfectly happy with that. Uh, yeah, what are, what are they going to do here exactly? This is... Oh, Needle Sealing coming down on the Sangan Summon. So, that will pop the Sangan, pop everything on field. Uh, I think maybe they could have saved the needle ceiling just to see what Hoy was doing. Um, but you know, that does clear the tokens. So that is something there, but I uh, saying, and we'll get to search something out here. What is Hoy going to search? Uh, not really sure what they can get. That would be, Oh, Oh, okay. Now it's starting to make a little bit more sense. Okay. Uh, Oh, Oh, and there are the legs. Damn. That's wild. Yeah, that is wild. Okay, that is game two there. Wild stuff for sure. Um, you don't often see Exodia come down in these later DM era formats, but uh, it can happen. So very, very cool to see. Let's dive into uh, Soul versus Chef Steph Curry because this is on game three of the first round. So um, I want to see how this one goes before we dive in to, I believe the uh, only round two going on right now is Blah versus Dump Truck. So we'll dive into that uh, shortly after. Um, but let's see what happens here. The buyer coming down and reborn as well here. Uh, let's see what they can. Oh, they got a lot of good reborn targets. So this could be pretty good. Uh, bring out a gear freed. And if they've got a blast to pair with it, then that is a powerful, uh, tool there. But, uh, this is, can be pretty rough for Seth Def Curry. Um, because it looks like the Gearfreed's going to attack into the Reaper and probably the Zamira will as well. Um, because by doing this, you know, Zamira doesn't lose attack 
and you're dealing a ton of damage to Chef Steph. So, uh, yeah, Chef Steph down to 4,700. Um, uh, Zambira does not go down to 19. It stays at 21. It has not destroyed a monster by battle. Uh, that is an important point. Um, hopefully it won't come up, but, uh, I mean, I'll message, I'll message Soul again. Uh. Yeah, it didn't destroy monster by battle, so um unless there's, there's something that we didn't see here, but um yeah, it is at twenty one. And uh so that that could have made a difference there potentially for uh for whether Chef Steph wanted to bring out Gemini Elf, but uh either way, uh they're gonna bring a Gemini attack into the gear freed here. Now Blaster Chain is in the back row there to use on the gear freed. Um if they so choose. And they could do that. Looks like they're just going to take it. So it looks like the back row is bluffed. No blast there. Um, but still, you know, this is a pretty good situation for Soul here. They've got some Byron at 21 that can attack over the Elf. So that can clear that. Um, yeah, rough rough stuff for Chef Steph indeed. But, uh, you know, the light points aren't too far off. But that gap can be reasonable enough in this format. Um, because, you know, uh, Ring is around. So it looks like Exod Force is coming down, hidden over the Sangan. Sangan will get a search here. Um, and it's a little bit awkward for Steph, uh, for Chef Steph because uh, if they search out like Fiber Jar or something, right, then Soul can just hold the Exile potentially and just use it on the Fiber Jar set. Uh, if they search out something else, then like, I mean, th there's a lot of different like branching paths that Soul can go uh, for here. So yeah, a bit of a tricky spot to be in for sure. Looks like they're going to add a Witch. I think that's probably the best choice. This forces Soul to use the Exile Force on the Reaper there. Uh, and now Zambira can attack in to the Elf. Uh, getting rid of that. Dealing 200. And uh, we'll have to see what happens here. Okay, it looks like Zambira going to hit over the Elf there. Deal 200. Drop down to 19. And then in main two, the Exile is going to pop that Reaper there, uh, clear that off the field. And now Chef Steph's got an empty field against Soul Zambira. Now Zambira can't get the aggressive pressure going here. They can only hit over monsters. Uh, but it looks like Chef Steph is going to set a monster there and uh, pass back to Soul. No back row. So maybe just a very monster heavy uh, hand here, potentially. But uh, if it is a monster heavy hand, then that might not be a witch set. It could just be a bluff. Looks like Sangan coming down as well to press the offensive uh, if that is a witch set. And it looks like it's going to hit into a Momonga. So that's really good for Chef Tef here. Uh, they get out two more Momongas, gain 1,000, uh, going up to 5,500 now. And deck thinning by hopefully two, maybe just one though, uh, depending on if they've bricked on Momongas. Um, but it looks like they're just going to bring out the one. So yeah, maybe, maybe a bit telling of what's in their hand there. Um, yeah. Uh, could also just be like they're trying to bait Soul into attacking uh, the Momonga there with their Sangan, uh, figuring, oh, well, you know, they've they've got a Momonga in hand as a brick, but actually they've got one in deck because Momonga can bring out any number of Momongas. Um, so, you know, you can technically bring out one. It's just generally not advisable to do so. So, uh, you know, we'll have to see what happens here. Looks like Sangan's going to attack into the set, so it is going to hit into the Momonga, and Chef Steph will gain 1,000. No other Momongas coming out. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I mean, generally, you do just bring out the double Momonga if you've got him. But uh, unfortunately, it looks like Chef Steph drew one, which is a flaw of Momonga uh, in this format, for sure. Or any format that Momonga's in. Looks like Duo coming down now, hitting two cards out of hand. Uh, this plays around if uh, Soul would add Serpent off Sangan, for instance. Um and hitting an MSG and TT is pretty good, honestly. And they're going to go for Reborn here as well. What are they going to Reborn back? They could Reborn back like a Gear Freed. Uh, go for Gear Freed, hit over some Byra. Uh, but yeah, I think Gemini Alpha is probably a little bit better. Um, because this hits over some Byra, but also, you know, if Soul top decks another Gear Freed, they can't crash into the Elf. So I think this makes sense. And yeah, that Gemini... Uh, it can either attack over the Sangan or attack over the Zambira. If it attacks into the Sangan, then that gives Soul a search here. Uh, but it also deals more damage. So, you know, that's something to consider as well. 
Um, but yeah, it looks like that. Gemini is going to attack into Zambira indeed. Uh, you can have the read that the set is not a Blast of Chain, or else Soul probably would have used it uh, when they had the gear freed up. But uh, they could have just been saving it for a situation like this, just to sort of uh, use the battle trick, uh, get over that Gemini with the Zambira, uh, and surprise their opponent. So um, that could definitely be a possibility here. However, it's kind of a less likely possibility. Uh, but we'll have to see exactly what they do here. Could also just be a ring. Uh, ring coming down would be pretty good for Soul, uh, hitting for 1,900 damage uh, with that Gemini elf there. It looks like it is indeed a ring, so ring will pop the elf, dealing 1,900, um, and dropping Chef Steph down to 36, Soul down to 47. Uh, but Chef Steph is not normal yet, so they could just set a monster here. It looks like they are indeed going to do that. And then go for a Mirage. Mirage is going to be pretty good here. And then they're going to pass back to Soul. So the question is, is that set the Momonga or the Witch? Because you kind of know that it's one of them. Um, unless Chef Steph is only playing two Momonga in their deck, which I guess is a possibility, but that's kind of wild if that's the case. Uh, it looks like Painful's coming down here. Uh, Painful, pretty good top deck. I'm not exactly sure what cards can win them the game here, but you can definitely make the game a bit frustrating for... Uh, for Chef Steph here. Looks like they're going to send three hand reps, likely. And I think that is a pretty good option to send. Um, yeah, it's a bit tricky here. Do you send the duo if you've got it? Because duo can rip two cards out of hand, but it does cost you a thousand, dropping you down to 3,700. Now you're getting in uh, for probably a thousand here, but if the set is Mamanga, then, you know, that's basically neutral damage, right? So it's 3,600 versus 3,700. And then your last ring, it sort of loses the advantage there. Um, and also Chef Steph, you know, if they've got an MSD in hand, you might not hit the MSD and they're not going to pitch the MSD. So yeah, it's a bit tricky here. It looks like they're going to send a uh, copy forceful book, uh, blast and a mirage of their own. Uh, now they haven't used up many MSTs. So, you know, mirage could be an option to give them, but it looks like, uh, Chef Steph is going to give them the blast, uh, figuring, you know, you don't have a gear free to pair with it. So this should be fine. Uh, Blast can be an annoying battle trick, though, so it is sort of good to keep that in mind as well. Looks like they're just going to set the Blast attack into the set. Uh, it is indeed the Witch. The Witch will get a search here, um, potentially searching out something like... Uh, I mean, there's a lot of things that you could search with Witch, honestly. You could search out Serpent if you're worried that you can't clear the Mirage. Uh, you could search out a good monster here. Uh, there's a lot of potential options for that Witch search, and that Witch search could potentially just get pitched off Mirage, um, but it could stick around and... Um, you know, what possibility you want to play for is definitely up to the player involved. So it looks like they're going to search out a Gemini Elf here, uh, which can be a good way to clear, well, it could clear Sangan, wouldn't be able to clear Zambira because Zambira plus Blast actually gets over to the Gemini Elf. Um, so yeah, it's kind of an awkward spot to be in. And it looks like they're going to draw for turn and in the standby, it look, are they going to pitch? Are they going to have a way to clear the Mirage? Um... Uh, and, okay, so three. So, yeah, um, it's good to shuffle the hand before doing this because, um, okay, rolling also works here um, because, like, you know, it, rolling is random as well, but uh, generally rolling does take some time to, to do. And also, if you hit a duplicate number, then that's kind of awkward. Um, but, you know, it is random, so. Uh, hitting a fiber jar. Fiber jar was probably a card of the shift that we wanted to keep there. Um See, like, this is why rolling... Okay, yeah, th that's also fine, yeah. Uh, so hitting a Forceful there. Um, forceful dead card for Chef, so, you know, probably a good option for them to hit. Uh, hitting a Gemini Elf, uh, that was the add off the Witch, or they potentially had another one as well. Um, and, oh, it was just three, yeah. So Red Geki going to come down, clear the Sangan and the Zambira. Uh, Sangan will get a search here, so that will be able to allow Soul to put on the pressure even more here, uh, grabbing at a Witch from deck. And we know Soul has Momonga. We also see now they've got a Gear Freed as well. So Gear Freed will be able to attack in for 1,800 here. Uh, dropping Soul down to a measly 29. Now, Soul has not used up Change of Heart yet. Change of Heart off the top does win Soul the game here. Um, but that's 1 out of 17 odds there. So I, I get why Chef Steph is just going on the aggressive here. Um, and yeah, it looks like they will draw 3 off that. So was the top deck change? It could also be pot into change, potentially. It could be graceful uh, into change. Maybe they've got another graceful as well. It looks like they do indeed draw the graceful. Um, so yeah, I guess you could say that there were like a couple options for drawing into change here. So maybe 
Um, this was a bit of a risky play, but I do get why uh, Chef Steph made this play. Um, I don't think it's like indefensible. I, I think it's I think it's a good play. Um, can you put your opponent on a little bit of a clock here? And also, you don't necessarily want to pitch Gear Freed. You'd rather pitch Momonga. So, um, I think that makes sense. The fact that the Soul is thinking about the other discard means that they do not have change. So, that is a good thing for Chef Steph here. Uh, because if they had change part, they'd just, you know, pitch whatever is not Witch or uh, change. So, not Witch, uh, activate change, take control of the Gear Freed, and just attack him for 29 and win the game that way. Um, you also get the benefit of using Blast on the Gear Freed to pop the Mirage uh, if there was like a Karibo in hand. Uh, but popping the Mirage here would not be the best because then, you know, Chef Steph gets to keep their hand. But um, now either way, it's a bit tricky. They, they got to think about exactly what they want to do here. They might have drawn the other ring, um, in which case they could ring the Gear Freed, dropping both players down a lot of life points. But definitely a, a tough spot to be in for sure. Um, Okay, it looks like uh, Dump Truck 1 versus Blah. So that's going to go into the uh, notes here as well. So it looks like Hayabusa was not able to uh, bring a tournament success. Huge shocker there. Um, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. Not at all a huge shocker. It's still a pretty good deck. I, in, a, like, in a format with triple declined. ring. In a format with, with triple declined. ring. I don't care. It's already declined from his Joey Pegasus days. But it's like still competent it, it can still get victories and win matches like in a I format with triple ring a uh a deck that generally triple ring tries is a to benefit not a disadvantage yeah, yeah. it's a double-edged sword but you can do it yourself it's another way to otk so on their turn you deal the damage i, I know that blah, but ring. you know i i do have access to your deck list right and uh something you were not playing is triple true need <laughs> so I'm not sure why I know you I wasn't playing Triple True Nade. What? No space. I no feel space. you have to play Triple True Nade in a Hayabusa deck, though. Because, like, Ring just kills you. Like, Ring Ring is so bad for you because what you do is you bring out Hayabusa, you equip a bunch of things to it, and then your opponent fires Ring, you take a ton of damage, and then you're, you, that's like a one for three trade. So, like... Yeah, maybe that made him a disadvantage, but still, the deck works. Yeah, but, like, do, do you understand what I'm saying? Like, uh, it's... The, the reason the why deck the deck... I can understand what you're saying and still say the deck works. Well, what do you mean by the deck works? It can win matches. Okay, but will it win it's matches okay. consistently? As long as there's two charity... But will it, will it win matches consistently? should not be discounted at all. So will it win it's matches not consistently? not tier one, but it's in the meta. I don't even think it's in the meta. I think it's like rogue. I think it's. I guess you could call rogue as it meta. Could tier two rogue or rogue. It depends on what you think of it. Yeah, I think it, I think it's rogue. But if if you're talking about like, you know, being successful in a in a tournament, I don't think that it really would stand a chance. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would call most rogue decks bad most of the time, right? Like, uh, I I don't necessarily look at the rogue tier. And I'm like, these are good decks. Um, and so I, I would Robin call... Robin Goblin is bad. Yes, Ayabusa but... Hayabusa is better than that. Like, yeah, but that's a low bar. Here's... That's like... Yeah. I, I mean, Gate Guardian bar. is bad. Hayabusa is better than Gate Guardian. But, like, that doesn't mean that yeah. it's a good deck, right? Um, doesn't mean it's a horrible deck. Well, yes, it doesn't mean it's a horrible deck, but what does make it a horrible doesn't deck... doesn't mean it's a bad deck well, either. No, no, no. What does make it a bad deck, mid. though, is looking at it's what is mid in at the... It's worst. Okay, but... Being a bad deck and being the worst deck are two different things, right? Like, you can be a bad yes, deck and not be the worst You're saying it's just deck. a bad deck in general. Yes, I'm saying it's a bad deck. It's not. Why? There's no point in arguing. You're just going to keep saying it is a bad deck and you're going to give reasons why. I, I gave you reasons. reasons why it's so a bad no deck. Points. You haven't responded to those reasons. I have. It's I, still capable did, of How did you respond to the triple ring allegation? Just game plan turning a... well. Yeah, but how do you respond to no point ending your it's game? It's going to be ignored. What? It's going to be ignored, my reasons. What? What's your reason for Triple Ring not just, you know, crippling the deck? It doesn't cripple the deck because it's a double-edged sword. So, yeah, I could have ran True Nade, and then I could have dealt damage. Like, I don't need to go... Well, you weren't running AK. True Nade, so... I could, should have, but doesn't mean it... I give up. But I give up. I, no, I, I'm I just give up. up. So, okay, if we're talking about, like, where decks fall in the metagame, right? 
and we're, we're having a reasonable conversation about this. Like you have to be able to defend your points that you're making about these decks, right? Like, uh, like, let me put it this way. I make a point, you make a counterpoint. I instantly want to give up because I already know it's not going to get through. I mean, that, that just sounds like you don't have a response to the counterpoint, right? No, and if you don't I'm, have a response to the counterpoint, I'm frustrated. Okay, well... Which leads to just wanting to not bother. Okay, well, if you don't bother putting up a defense for the points, then uh, I'm going to continue to believe what I believe about the deck. So I know. Uh, but let's, but let's move on from this. Not listen. What? I just want to stop arguing about this now. Yeah, Please. I said let's move on from this. So let's move on from this. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's die. Let's, we've got a very interesting game going on here. Um, very back and forth, too. Uh, triple mirages make this format very very interesting so uh it's very cool to see <clears throat> okay that mirage has been sticking around for a while is that the same mirage that's been on field for a long time nightmare will coming down now on the set <clears throat> which is very exciting um because that does stop like five jar from being flipped up and also does start the clock going um and uh, Chef will be drawing three. It looks yep. Soul saying draw. Go ahead, draw. Um, and yeah, this is. I mean, Triple Mirage. Like, I feel like a lot of the focus has been on Triple Ring, but Triple Mirage also does change the format quite a bit. Mirage can be useful, yeah. Yeah. It's slightly off because well, you need to build around it still at three. At one, you just need three MST. But Wait. if you're using three, you're that just means you have fewer MSTs for like an IO or some other card you need to snipe. Well, you don't have to activate so you have to... all of the Mirages, right? No, you don't have to. I'm just making the point that if one gets sniped by their MST and you activate another one, there's just one MST that you have to pop the Mirage for. It's yeah. just an extra MS, an ex MST you just lose. Yeah, you but also if you, if you go for that play then you're doing it with the knowledge that you're losing that mst right like you don't have to activate the second mirage the reason why you would activate it is because you're okay making that sacrifice right um yeah so and I but you are thought, you yeah, are correct that decks can build around it right like you could play yeah. um you know uh, i think right Geeky break is legal in this format as well it uh, is so you serpent could, is existing as well like yep so you, could you can build Rage off of mirage it's just a yeah. bit harder to do. Well, I'm I'm just saying I don't think you necessarily have to build off Mirage, but uh oh wow, okay. It looks like Chef is going to take that 18 and take that 11, so that will be the end of the game. Looks like the last two cards were Confi and Ring, neither of which quite do it here. So uh yeah, and that was a fiber jar set. So I think that the nightmare wheel on the fiber was a good play. Uh it's just they didn't have a way to stop the change, and the change was inevitable at some point here. So uh very, very good games though. Uh, from Chef Steph and Soul, uh, good stuff indeed. Uh, so Soul will be moving on to the next round. Um, and is Holy vs. Ben Labs wrapped up yet? Let's see if that's wrapped up. They haven't messaged the chat, so it might still be going. Uh, I mean, draws can happen in this format. Also, it seems like Koi was on a bit of a slower deck. Uh, very interesting. It's on deck. game three. Um, yeah, it's on game three. Yeah. And has Hoy has indeed pitched two Exodia pieces. Uh, uh, and it's, uh, yeah. as long as they're not the head, oh. you know, you can get them back with backup. So that's pretty good. Weird deck. Ben yeah. Labs is playing. Yeah, very innovative deck um, for Come both on. players, honestly. Yeah. Um, very cool stuff. I'm looking at it. It's like Beast Spellcaster, but you have Lava Golem. Well, Lava Golem, I think, is he in the side. Um, yeah, I'm probably, yeah. yeah. Just like, you be prob I get for the Mirages, an extra thing so you don't have to use MST. You can get life points off of it. Yeah, well, but, we, we've we uh, yeah. caught this uh, match on stream a couple times, and uh, I, haven't watched I think it, the, the Lava Gold makes sense to bring in against Exodia because, but yeah, head getting Dude. sent, that's disastrous GG. for the deck. Fiber Jar can shuffle probably back GG. everything, but, um, you know, you've got oh, to yes, actually. Fiber Jar, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, the thing is that now Ben Lobs just has to play around Fiber Jar, right? Oh, Hoy signed ah. up Fiber, so never mind. That's that's probably the end of the game, yeah. That's, uh, yeah, yeah. not much you can do right. against that. And uh, I mean, this is one of the reasons why uh, Exodia is 
is also kind of in a in a rough spot. Like if the head does get hit, you do have fiber jar, true. But if the opponent then plays around fiber jar uh the whole time, then that, that's kind of rough. For Exodia, but, you should have a smoke screen anyway, in case game one basically they're going to counter Psyduck for Exodia, so you should pull the cards out regardless and go into something else. Yeah. Although you could just say, like, I can turbo faster than they can get their counterplay up. Because, like, what is the additional counterplay that people are going to play? Maybe a card destruction. Uh, maybe more Dawns if they're not playing Dawns in the main already. Um, Spirit Reaper, but, Dawns, Alug. Yeah. But uh, a lot of the decks are already playing Spirit more, Reaper and Dawn. Like, so, like, if you're going into the game already and, and you're just, like, like you're going to be facing a fair amount of hand control anyway. So the deck's kind of already teched to face that. So uh, there's not really much yes. more that decks can add in in terms of hand control elements, maybe drop off, but like drop offs kind of awkward Maybe you could try and do Yada, but like Yada is also kind of awkward, especially because we saw um, in the previous games that Hoy was playing, they had things like scapegoat, Waboku, etc. And Yada's kind of bad into those. So um, maybe Solemns. Solemns are probably good against a deck like that. Um, the one thing is that they, they sort of reduce your ring options. Like if you're trying to ring to win, uh, then putting in multiple Solemns can be kind of rough in that regard. But, Mm. Um, you, know, you don't have to play three ring. You could go for two. You don't have three, to play three ring, but ring is such an yeah. aggressive tool that it's generally good to play it. It is. Um, but it is a very versatile tool. I'm just talking tool. about the Exodia smoke screen potentially. Like you don't. Oh, I'm not saying Exodia. I, I'm yeah. not saying that the Exodia ring thing. I'm saying for if you're going aggressive, then you lose some ring options to like end the game, right? Because ring is another tool that you can use to end the game. And if you're using yes. Solemns instead, then you've got to be more careful with your rings. Um, yes. It's still pretty strong, Ring of Destruction, like insanely so. Yeah, and that's why I'm saying it, that the Solemns are, yeah. make it a little bit awkward. But you yeah. still want to be in playing a, the rings. Yeah. In a way, that it's like this format and Silly Snake format are kind of like sister formats in the sense that a card that should not be at three at all at this point in the game's history, even equivalent to the OCG, is at three. I mean, you could like, say Ring that of about Destruction, most of the unlimited yeah, Ring formats. of Destruction was put to one in May 2002, if I remember properly, in the OCG. Like, it's like Charity was put to one before we got it. And we had to play with three Charity and then two Charity. Three Charity and Silly Snake. Three Duster. Duster was not at three for years when we, when we finally got Duster and we had the Silly Snake theoretical format. It's yeah. just... Me, me. Yeah, I mean, you can Less say that about most of the snake. unlimited formats. Uh, and that's part of what yeah, makes like, them fun, you know, just seeing yeah, like, how crazy. Most of them are really memes because we get them, and then the list that comes with it puts them as their actual hits. I, I guess like memes charity, are in the eye of the beholder because. Yeah, like, yeah, uh, yeah I, I consider Silly Snake an, an utter meme, and PGD. Less so, but still a bit meme with three ring. Yeah, I consider all the unlimited formats uh, pretty meme but that's part of what makes them fun, right? Just because the format's a meme doesn't mean it's not fun to play, right? Um, so, yeah, it's 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 still fun. But uh, we see Wangyu, Yada, Mirage, Rhoda, and Confi. That's kind of an interesting set of cards to send there. I guess they've used Forceful already. And I will say, we do know that Soul is a major delinquent duo hater, so they might not be on duo in this deck. Um, but yeah, duo is a very good card. So in general, at least in the main, yeah. it should be in the side. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, like it's a very good card. Um, I, I think it should be mained because like, even if you don't know you're going first, like if you do perchance go first, then it's very good. Or even if you draw an early game, it's pretty good. So yeah. I think it's generally pretty good. Um, True Serpent is in the format, but Serpent's also in GOAT, and Duo is still treated as being very, very good in GOAT, and similar reasons apply here. It, um, Duo's, based on what we've done and how we've played and how we've tested, Duo's most certainly at its best in GOAT format. It's yeah. like, it's, it's I, pretty strong here, but it's and nowhere part of that is, near as strong. Yeah, part of that is because the, the other hand rips aren't legal in GOAT, so Duo can really shine. Because Duo is definitely yeah. the worst of the hand rips in these formats, but just because it's the worst of the hand rips doesn't mean it's a bad card by any means. No, um, not at all. So, yeah, it looks like uh, Sol's got a pretty commanding aggressive pressure here. They've got Gear Freed up, they've got Sangan up. Uh, Wames did search out Jinzo, so that could be a bad sign for Sol here. Could mean that a change of heart or a Snatch Jill 
is coming. But if Snatch Shield's coming, then you have to take the Sangan. Uh, that's awkward. Looks like Change of Heart's going Ooh. to take the Gear Feeder, at least attempt to, but Blast is coming down here. Now, is Blast going to pop the set that Wames has, or is Blast going to pop their own Gear Freed to prevent uh, Wames from shooting something out the Jinzo? Um, Should probably pop the Gear Freed, in my opinion. It depends on what Soul's yeah. got in hand. Uh, Soul could yeah. potentially uh, let Wames tribute out the Jinzo and then bring out Exod Force off the Sangan. Um and then pop the Jinza that yeah. way. But uh, I do think that this does make pl uh, sense also to pop the gear freed. Like, uh, I'm just saying it really does depend on what Soul's got in hand. And, uh, yeah. We still don't know what Wayne's is playing. We saw which. Yeah. I mean, it could be a standard deck. Ooh. Ooh, duo coming down as well. Oof. Yeah, definitely the Speaking right... up. Yeah. Uh, popping the gear so... freed. Uh, definitely did save this because otherwise uh, Wames could save the duo for after. Uh, now, yeah. they could have also potentially um, used the duo after they summoned out a monster attack over Sangin, but they probably didn't want Soul to search out Serpent because Serpent and duo is a very unfortunate combination. So, um, yeah, Pretty I think much. this order makes sense. Oh, that's oh. big. Germ coming down. He's on burn. To Sangin, yeah. Bringing out two more germs, dealing 500 as well on top of that. And this Burner is going to be fiends. pretty brutal. Yeah. Uh, Germ is a pretty good card at getting aggressive pressure on board, also setting up burn as well. Um, oh, Soul should take the 500? Yes, they should. So um, hopefully uh, they'll realize that. But uh, yeah, I can message them as well. Look, there it, it looks is. like they took the five. Um, yeah, Dump Truck's also watching as well because eventually this could wind up facing a Dump Truck. Um, so at the winner of this game then faces Pikachu one, two, three. Uh, and then the winner of that game will face, uh, the final match against dump truck. Uh, this game's in game one, Ben Lodge, because, um, basically the soul versus chef Steph Curry game was very, very long and grindy and very intense. And so it just took a bit. Um, and also that was like, if you look at the challenge thing, uh, that was like Wames had the buy. So that sort of branch of the tree was a bit behind. Um, but yeah, a ring on that last germ, preventing uh, the 500 from going through there uh, and generally just, you know, dealing some damage to Wames as well. Tomato coming down here though, hitting over that witch. That's a pretty good hit there. Um, honestly, you know, you could argue, well, I guess they want to do that also to keep Wames off the Jinzo uh, that we know is in hand because, you know, ring would be useless against Jinzo. So that makes sense. Um, however, you could also argue that, like, they could just search out Exile here, pop the Jinza that way, and then the ring's online for later for a more impactful monster. But, uh, either way, I think it's fine. Um, it could also just be playing around another hand rip if Wames has a Confi or Forceful as well. Um, but they probably would have used that on the Sangan search, so. Yeah, they would have had to have drawn it for turn here, or, or off the pot. But definitely a tricky choice here for Soul. Um, if you go for Exiled, it can pop the tomato, sure. But then if Wames has more aggressive pressure, they can keep the aggressive pressure going, and Wames has got the tempo advantage over you. So it looks like they're going to grab back a Faith. Faith can get back a variety of good cards from Grave there. Notably, no no Raigeki, no change of heart, uh, none of that. So a um, bit of a tricky option there. I mean, you can draw deeper into your deck, though, which is nice, but... I guess Snatch is on field, but Snatch can be dealt with ah. by MST, so... Let's see... Ch okay, Change of Heart is in the graveyard, so no punish for that. Well, Change of Heart is not in uh, Soul's graveyard, but yeah. In, not, in, in Wames', in Wames is graveyard, so Wames can't yeah, take control like, of it, yeah. Um, yeah, it'd be disastrous, but if you look at Soul's graveyard... He has both charities already there. Yep. So if he can just grab the charity back. Oh, MST oh, coming there's... down as well. That is, that's very scary for a soul because uh, Wames might want to save the MST for the snatch, but this means like they do not care about that snatch deal uh, coming back, which might mean that they've got Raigeki uh, or something like that in Grave. That's so probably the only this... answer other than Hades. Yeah. But uh, I don't think, unless he's playing Fiends, I don't think he's main decking. Yeah, I mean, Germs are Fiends, so it could be uh, yeah. a, just a spicy Necrofear brew. 
Oh, oh, creature swap. That is insanely valuable. But he there. can't flip the It can't flip the, the faith this turn. But uh, that's really good. Yeah, and that's just, Soul's just going to say, you got it. Uh, honestly, Wamp didn't even need to flip that turn because they could have summoned out uh, Jinzo over the faith, attacked into the tomato, mm -hmm. gotten out either another tomato or like can soldier if they're playing that. And uh, that probably would have just been the end of the game there. So yeah, the very good The power spell. of creature swap. Once yeah. again, showing it off. So, Pryo is indeed in this format, Ben L. However, Exiled Force versus King Tiger Wangu, uh, the Pryo didn't actually matter there because basically when Exiled Force summoned out, it's immediately popped with Wangu's effect because that's just a continuous effect that's going on. Um, so, you won't be able to use Pryo's um, for the Exiled Force effect to pop the Wangu. So, um, Same thing with Cannon Soldier. Yes, exactly. Um Although Exiled and Wang, who is definitely an interaction that comes up a bit more often. But uh, yeah, so you yeah. can't use the prio on things like that. Um, so yeah, that's not an out to Wang, who unfortunately. But um, it, it is good to know that prio, like ignition effect priority is a thing in this format. And it's a thing in every DM format, every GX format, and every 5Ds format. It only becomes not a thing in uh, Zekflare for Dino Rabbit around there. Um because that prevents Rescue Rabbit from uh, using prior priority on its effect, uh, which would allow it to dodge around like effect failure and things like that. So um, that was the point in the game's history where they, they changed is that ruling. A normal monster deck being insane because of a rule? Who knew? Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, it looks like uh, Confiscation coming down here after a pot. So Soul is starting off on a really good note here. Um, Getting full knowledge of Williams' hand, getting to rip the most powerful card out of that hand. Um, but this does also drop them down by a thousand. If Williams is playing a bit of more of a burn focused strategy, that could be kind of rough for them. So yeah. uh, we didn't quite off. see what they were doing other than creature swap, which probably says they aren't on burn. Well, at least not in the on, main deck. They could be on burn with the tomatoes and the germs and things like that, because you summon out a germ or a tomato, you swap, creature swap to, it, yeah. and then you get out more. So Swap is definitely a thing that Burn can play. It's just something that we haven't really seen Burn decks play in the past, but oh. definitely a very good card. When you come down here, Reborn on the Jinzo as well. So this is a brutal that... turn uh, for Wames here. Now these won't attack in, which is good to know about, but this shot, yeah. it shuts off Ring of Destruction. Um, it makes Swap a lot worse because Soul can pick just to give the Wenghu. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just rough. And the heavy on the back row here isn't even the best because then Soul gets to keep the Mirage cards that they draw here. So that's just a, a big, like a really, really rough turn, especially because Wames did not have another monster in hand. So yeah, this is just going to be super rough here. The question is, do you even heavy the board? And like, you might just want to try and discard cards off Mirage, but Soul could have the MST to punish that. And, and they're never going to play into heavy again. So it looks like they are just going to go over the heavy here. I think yeah. that is probably the right duo. pick. But uh Oh, yeah, looks like no MST in Dark the back row, but gone. you still got to do this. You've also got duo here to rip apart the hand a little bit more. Um, so that's nice as well. Uh, hitting an exile, which would have been useless with the wing Hu, but you know, after you've cleared the wing Hu, exile is very good, of course. Um, and yeah, soul's got to think Just about what having else to it set. in reserve. Yeah, still a rough spot for Williams here. They had to have drawn a monster. Uh, or else they're in a really tough spot. And even if they do draw a monster, it's not even the best. Um, I mean, I guess you could set it, you know, s swap it with Wang Hu at least to clear the Wang Hu from field um, because Soul has to attack over the Wang Hu. But, like, that's just really awkward. So, yeah, I don't know. Not really many good options here. Discarding gear a gear free there and setting one passing. Oof, rough stuff. Uh, um, no monster. Yeah, and uh, or no monster that they want to commit at least. And uh, this is 4,100 damage, so they're dropping down to 29. And this is just uh, not looking good, not looking good for Wames here at all. Oh, and Soul is another and Mirage, yeah. The power of multiple Mirages coming through here. Um, yeah, that's another thing, too. Oftentimes, your opponent might clear your Mirage, so um, you having another as backup is really good, and it's sort of gone through your opponent's MSTs as well, so. Um, that's the real power in this format of multiple mirages. Yeah. Um, but let's see what Williams does. I mean, they might just concede. Like, I don't, I don't know how, how you're getting around this. Like, right. Get your dark hole. Oh, could there's be like something at least, but it uh, looks like they're setting one. Raigeki could be a fiver. Would, if, yeah, if not save the game, 
if not save the game, then at least no, that's just they didn't submit the feed. They were like, you've yeah. got you've got enough here. Um, I I don't need to see what comes next. Um, so I guess it probably was not a fiber, because <laughs> if, if it was fiber, you might like stick around. But yeah, that hope was just nothing. Hope he doesn't have anything. Yeah, but uh, they they also could have just been waiting to see what they pitched off the Mirage to get more info. But um, you know, once that option was off the table, it was like, eh, I don't really need to see anymore. So, yeah, rough stuff for sure. Um, sometimes games just go like that. Sometimes you just, one player opens crazy and uh, the opponent can't do anything about it. But oftentimes there are some back and forth games. Of course, Triple Ring does definitely warp the format around it a bit. Um, but we'll have to yeah, see. It's it, still yada, just extra stuff. Well, yeah, but Triple Ring does warp the format to be very different from yada. Like, also Triple yeah. Mirage warps Somewhere. the format as well. Um, like, th there. Like this format is definitely very different from the auto format, but uh, duo coming down here hitting a blast, and uh, what else will it hit here? It hits an MST too, so that's gonna be pretty good. Coffee as well. Oof. Oh, yeah, this is, this is looking rough for Soul now. Wait, it's down two thousand, which is something. It's not nothing, but uh, coffee. Uh, but he can now snipe the ring. There's a ring. Which yep, you makes... can snipe the ring if if that would be the best thing to snipe there. You can just snipe any powerful thing that Soul might have, um, and just play around the rest. So brutal stuff here um i mean hit a witch oh wait uh, that makes a lot of sense because witch can be a very good tool to search soul into whatever else their deck might have and then they're just gonna set one pass okay that's a bit of an interesting also play. Maybe no monsters. soul might not have a monster yeah either. that could be true too um could also just be the set is a tt or a ring or something here uh looks he like wing is getting that. dropped so uh <laughs> You know, that might not be the top, though. What Ames could have given uh, uh, left soul with the Wangu, so... Uh, he, I think it's because he uh, wouldn't have taken actually, Witch if... Actually, the, the Mirage might have been the top deck here because Wames clearly yeah. does not have a way to clear the Mirage. So that that was more likely the top deck, I think, in my opinion. Looks like Change is coming down. So this makes a lot of sense. You change the um, Wangu, tribute yeah, over for Jinzo, that makes sense. and then you uh, attack in, so... Yep, there or it goes. Take out Jinzo. There's the Jinzo. So makes sense to leave the Wangu because if you left the Witch, then Soul would get a search here, which would obviously be very bad. Yeah. Um, now, does so, he have the MST? Well, I would assume that the MST is not set because Wames set a card here uh, first turn. And I I think that the, the draw was probably Mirage. Uh, might not have been Mirage. It might have just been something else. Uh, might have been that unknown set there. Oh. Uh, but yeah, brutal stuff. Um, pitching four oh. really good ones, and that is I was also a really good one because it can shut off your own mirage. So yeah, it's rough. Snatch will come. Well, Ooh. actually, I can uh, shut off mirage, I guess, um, in the face of Jinzo. But snatch on the Jinzo is going to be pretty good here. Put on a bit of pressure here. Now Williams will be gaining back a thousand here, so this isn't quite a two turn clock. But uh, this is a very very scary spot for Williams to be in if they don't have ways to deal with that snatch. So they are going to. Gain a thousand. Uh, Soul draws four cards here, and uh, what will Wames do? They're just gonna set one and pass, or set another, and pass back. So if Soul uh, does not have a way to clear that set, then uh, this is going to potentially be pretty good for Wames. MST coming down for the Mirage makes sense that they draw into that eventually. Um, but uh, what are they gonna do now? Change of heart. Change of heart would be yeah, pretty he brutal here uh, if they've got it. If they got change, if they got knock, uh, even if they got exiled, uh, exiled would be kind of rough uh, for Wames. But uh, they'd still survive. It would just be very, very tough for them. Um, but, you know, there's still 24 cards left in deck, so it definitely might not be the change of heart in hand. The fact that they're thinking about this means that it probably is not the change of heart in hand, or else they would have just, you know, fired that immediately, won the game, basically. Um, probably. But Unlikely Wames on Scapegoat. Yeah. Oh, this charity. I mean, they're playing swap, so they could be on scapegoat. But, uh, yeah, it, I think that scapegoat is less likely than other options they might have. Uh, and either way, you go for the change here because, like, if they get scapegoat, they're gonna wall up with scapegoat anyways. But uh, this way, at least you push for lethal if they don't have scapegoat, right? So, um, and the format is very, very fast, so you kind of do have to get aggressive here. Um, charity though will potentially help them here. The fact that they thought about that might mean. They've got a pretty good hand that they don't want to lose. Um, 
So that's scary for Williams there. But it also means that they probably didn't have... The fact that they're not like immediately pitching here means that they probably don't have change in hand, or else they would just pitch two, two other cards and then go for change, basically. Um, the cards they don't need, like Blast yeah, exactly. with change. Yeah, Blast with oh, change. Oh, pitch you don't need Because you got Jinzo up. So, okay, yep, Exod coming down here to pop the set. That's going to be pretty good for them. Uh, Williams will still survive here for a turn, uh, but it's going to be a bit rough. Yeah, losing Jerm oh. is quite unfortunate. Uh, Jerm would have helped you wall up quite a bit, but uh, now they're down to 500. Now, they will be gaining 1,000 here off the Snatch, and Ring is offline, so Soul can't do, like, a Ring play to just kill Williams here. Um, but this Jinzo's still is, on the field and, anyway. That, that's what I'm saying. That's why yeah. I'm saying Jinzo's shutting off Ring. Um but this is still a very good position for um, Soul to be in, for sure. What will Williams do? They're, they do have another, another monster, card. so they're, they're going to set that, and hopefully that will be enough. Now, we know that Soul does not have Change of Heart, or else they would have fired it the previous turn. They could top deck it. Uh, Rhoda is going to be potentially pretty good here as well. Uh, if you search at, like... Uh, it looks oh. Like, oh, Sasuke, yeah, Sasuke will potentially wrap up the game if they don't have a way to deal with this. Uh, and will that be the end of the game? It was, looks like another germ there. Jinzo attacking in. And, uh, yeah, they're typing in chat. Probably the GGs. Uh, yeah, Warrior Toolbox Sasuke is kind Samurai. of rough. Yeah, died to their own Jinzo twice. Yeah, rough stuff indeed, Wames. But Soul will be moving on to the next round, showing the strength of the Warrior Toolbox there being able to bring out, like, uh, your Sasuke's and things like that uh, for cases where you need it. Yeah, Mirage is OP. We saw Mirage really go off there. Uh, Triple Mirage, pretty nuts. Um, but, uh, yeah, that uh, game is now wrapped up, and now we're going to be getting into Soul versus Ben Labs here. Looks like Ben Labs is already hosting the game, and uh, I'm excited to see how it goes. Um, I don't think that Ben Labs has won a locals yet. So if they do make it to finals and they do manage to win, then this will be their first locals one. So that'd be a really exciting uh, victory for them. Uh, and meanwhile, Soul and Dumpstruck Within... are old hands at winning these locals. They've won quite a bit. So there's definitely some uh, stiff competition for Ben Labs here. Um, Cause Soul has won three locals and Dumpstruck is in second place in the local scoreboard with six locals wins. So definitely very, very tough competition here. But, Yay. Uh, we'll have to see if Ben Labs is able to pull it off. So it looks like Ben Labs will be going second, which definitely does benefit Soul. Uh, going first in this format is really good um, because, you know, not only the handers, but also you have access to setting your rings first, which is very nice. You've got access to firing Mirage first, which is very good as well. So uh, a, lot of, a lot of good stuff there. Oh, what? It's oh, a wall. Yeah, it is gear free. So it's, it's yeah, a wall. That is you know, twenty three hundred wall. Uh, we saw Goblin a bit in some of the previous games that Soul was playing. So, uh, it's definitely something that people can use here. Um, also, ring target. It is yes. Uh, having the twenty three hundred to deal off a of ring uh, after you've gone aggressive can be very powerful. Change part on the Ooh. Goblin is gonna be pretty good here though. Um. It looks like items Ooh. coming down, though. That's going to shut off the chains. Looks like no MST in Ben Labs' hand. Yeah, kind of rough for them. But uh, Io is one of the most brutal cards in the DM era. Uh, a bit of a toxic card as well. A lot of people, you know, do not like Io uh, around. But it's something that you have to sort of keep in mind and play around a bit. But uh, definitely brutal when this card gets flipped up, for sure. Uh, especially if, like, one player's got just the edge and the other player has all these spell cards that they want to use. Uh, the eye of shutting that down is just rough, rough stuff. Um, so, a note. PGD is played under TCG rules still. Yes, it is indeed. So it's a TCG format. This might... This might not work as well with Blast with Chain. Okay, okay. Blast with Chain. Because Blast with Chain converts into an equipped spell when it resolves. Yes, but the thing is that the key part of Blast with Chain, the thing that the reason why a lot of people play it, um, is because uh, of the pop effect, which will indeed still resolve, even yes. if it's treated as a spell under IO. 
because it'll be popped and then be because go back to trap. being treated as a trap um, once it's in the grave. So graveyard. that will still resolve. Um, so it's not really the worst thing for Soul here. Uh, realistically, the only thing that gets over a Goblin Attack Force is the Jinzo, which shuts off Elastic Chain anyways. So, um, you know, it doesn't really matter that much. The the one thing they could do if they wanted to play around Jinzo a little bit is maybe preemptively use Blast of Chain on the Goblin, but that just seems really bad. <laughs> um, so uh, I think it makes sense for them not to do that. They're going to search out a Gear Freed, so the set might indeed be a Blast. Um, because if it's not uh, if it's not a Blast, then they could have gone for, like, Sasuke here to hit over the sets. Maybe Sasuke's a side deck card, though, so... Um, Ooh, yeah. Ooh, Momonga here Killer is going to go pretty hard for Ben Labs. Gain them a thousand. Kill us squirrels. Yeah. Uh, and the Momonga is giving you life points is very nice in this format where Ring is running around three copies. And, you know, having that life point buffer is very nice. So And uh, extra bodies and two cards thin from deck. Yeah. So it looks and like we're going to go into main two here. Goblin attack force's weakness means that Soul will probably not be attacking with it. And they did not indeed, yes. Uh, because we're in main two, no goblin attack. And like, with this sort of board setup, you don't necessarily want to switch goblin. Maybe if you could clear all the monsters, then that would be one thing. But uh, since there are no mongas to flip up and attack into the goblin, it doesn't really make sense to do that. So, um, yeah, Soul's just going to set another and set another. Or are we going to see another Mirage? We do see another Mirage there. Maybe another reason to uh, set the IO there. Another thing about Blast of Change that can pop your own Mirages. If you do really need an out to it, uh, then that is another out potentially. So uh, very cool stuff there. Oh, wouldn't it need to be a bit early? Because Blast with Mirage will resolve before Blast with Chain does. You just do Blast in the draw phase. And then... Also true. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, there. Uh -oh. Right, Geki coming down. Blast will go through here. Uh, now, will they choose to pop one of the monsters on field? Or are they going to pop their own Blast? Um, so, uh, Blast triggering and uh, not Goblin Attack Force triggering. Doesn't go to defense right now. Looks like they are indeed going to pop a manga, so this might mean that they've got an MST to deal with their own Mirage. Uh, or they just don't care about discarding. At least with their hand. Maybe Serpent. Yeah. Maybe another Mirage. Like, Mirage is also well. If there's another Mirage off. in hand, then you still care about discarding because, like, uh, yeah. But I mean, I think this is is fine. Kaiju getting switched up, and another Kaiju come down as well, uh, dealing thirty six hundred damage here, uh, and banishing four cards from grave. Hey, this is very control style deck. Mm -hmm. I won't be surprised if this was a squirrel deck with rats and such. Yeah, I mean, it might be. I mean, we did see Rats earlier on in Ben Labs' uh, deck, and it is playing a uh, larger number than normal. It's playing over 40 cards, which would make sense in a more recruiter-based strategy. So I'm not sure if Ben Labs would call it Rat Box or something along those lines, but um, it definitely is a very innovative deck, so very cool to see. Um, it looks like they're going to banish the Goblin, the Gear Freed, and then the Io in the Blast. And mm -hmm. as a note, in this format, Kaiku is pre rata um in the tcg so it can banish anything from grave not just monsters so that's why you're able to banish those traps and that makes a lot of sense for if a fiber drag gets flipped up eventually um you don't yeah. necessarily want those getting shuffled back into deck so speaking uh, of fiber maybe it might have been better to banish the rota instead of the bat blast with chain at least in this case yeah that definitely is a possibility but i do think that like banishing the blast with chain which serves the combo piece for soul is also very good so I don't necessarily think there's too much of a difference between banishing the Rota and the Blast, but it definitely is a consideration that you can make. Um, Graceful coming down here as well, which is really good for Soul. Pitching a Confi, so they don't care about Ben Labs' hand, I guess, which is maybe a bit scary for Ben Labs. Um, or they just don't want to pay the 1,000 because they are at 3,700, which is kind of low. Um, they're going to pitch a Confi, and they're thinking about the other card to pitch, so this could be a bit of a tough choice for them. Oh, they're going to pitch an Exile here. Um, yeah, I think that makes sense, especially if you've got Dark Hole. Wow. Yeah, clearing up the entire board there. Um, but your life points are a bit too low to um, be able to just go for an Exile push um, because then you lose a lot of tempo there and your opponent can swing in. Okay. But uh, same game coming down and passing. So playing around the knock potentially. Um, or just saying, like, you don't have many more monsters to hit in here because you used up your monsters. Yeah. But uh, yeah. 
what I was thinking about with the multiple Mirage, multiple MSTs, because he used his MST on his Mirage. Now the sword is up. And yeah. And also, um, a fun thing about, oh, Ooh, ring and choosing ring. not to ring the saying, and I think it does make sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, too that, low. Yeah. But that does potentially put swords in a bit of an interesting spot in this format. Now, I still am not really the biggest fan of swords here because if your opponent does want to commit to an aggressive push, they can just commit to that push and not use uh, their mirages right away, right? Um, so I still think the swords is in an awkward spot here, but it does cost an MST. So that is good to consider um, where your MSTs yeah. could go to other things instead. So uh, It's okay. Like It's better than it has been in previous formats, but... Yeah, it's but more like it I depends did, if like that if it's good enough card. to it, really yeah, have an impact, right? Um, which again goes back to the point where like something can be better than it has been or better than something else, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's good, right? Or worth playing. Um, but I don't think swords is terrible. So um, I mean, we're seeing it stall off a bit here, but we'll have to see if it actually does enough to make it worth it. Um, but they're gonna pitch a mirage and a an, uh, mirror force there. Go for Yada. Go for Raigeki. So this is what I was saying. We're like, uh, if they do oh. want to go for a push, they can just go for the push and not go for the Mirage, right? Um, so this is going to put Ben Lod in a bit of a tough spot. If that last card in hand is not something that can protect them here, then they might just be out of luck. Um, the Yada lock is yeah, just punished tough like that. Yeah, tough stuff if uh, the last card is not something good. Uh, okay, yep, the auto draw is turned yes. off, so this means that Soul is free just to go to the end phase of their turn. And it uh, looks like they're going to set one, pass back to Ben Lodge there. Uh, and that see he what hasn't happens. admitted defeat. Means they have not, so they something. could have something here. Another monster would potentially wall up for a little bit longer. Um, Bazoo, Bazoo is going to be pretty good. Uh, if Soul doesn't have a way to clear that Bazoo, then the Yacht Air Force is in the graveyard. Through. Yeah, so you can feel a bit safer attacking into the Sangen here, but Sangen does get Soul a Search, which you might not want to do at this point. However, you might not really have much of a choice, right? Um, it's, Raigeki is gone as well, so... Yep, but there's two, still two not... rings around, so if the set is a ring, then uh, this will probably be the end of the game I, here. Yeah. Um, he might still allow it to go through. No, the there's attack, no reason to allow it. And then it, ring in but, the end uh, phase. Yeah, well, there's no reason to allow it because if ring if Bazoo attacks into Sangin, they take 1500, and then you can't ring the uh, Bazoo. True. Uh, so I, yeah, it depends on what Ben Labs did, but he boosted. So yeah, yeah. I mean, either way, you that. just ring the Bazoo and you win, right? So yeah, uh, but yeah, either way here, this is the out lock. This will win in uh, less than 18 turns. So um, there's no risk of deck out for Soul, and yeah, so that's just going to be the end of the game there. Very GG. The it's showing power. the power of the Adalok in this format, but also the power of Triple Ring. I mean, Triple Ring enabled Soul to uh, sort of set up the Adalok, and maybe having all that removal um, does help um, with setting up that sort of thing. But, Furthermore, uh, if it hasn't been confirmed already, we're seeing Pot and Two Cherries just too much. Way too much. Well, I mean, that's what happens when you got Triple Mirage, you got Pot, Double Charity, like, there's yes. so much draw in this format, and uh, that can also make these games very, very quick. Uh, as we've seen here, you know, just drawing deep into your deck, having all that aggressive pressure, um, it makes sense why a deck like Warriors would be pretty good in this format, because it is a deck that gets aggressive, right? You're able to get out your monsters quickly with Rota, that also deck thins. Um, you're able to use Blast with Chain to pop your opponent's stuff to get in for more damage, so it definitely is a powerful deck. But definitely yeah. not unbeatable. So Ben Lab is saying, I hope I can make a comeback. And I think that comeback is definitely possible. I mean, we've seen a bunch of games go to game three in this uh, local so far. And uh, definitely very intense stuff. So it, it could really go either way, depending on what happens here. So uh, Ben Lab is going to draw five. Now, the downside to playing a uh, deck with over 40 cards is that this does make it a bit less likely that you draw into your power cards. But it looks like Pot of Greed is just on the top anyway. So it doesn't, doesn't uh, necessarily matter if Ben Labs, they're graceful as well. So, yeah, only fair, Soul says, because they did manage to pull off some pot graceful action uh, last game. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that that's sort of, like, the way of these formats, right? Like, you know, people are going to probably get sacked somewhat, and, uh, you know, you just gotta roll with it. That's that's what you sign on for for playing a format like this. Um, like, especially if they're too graceful yeah. around, right? So, um, yeah. this is probably the, this is the last format where this is a somewhat common occurrence, though, as Yada format, 
is kind of different in that. Now. I think the Yada format, you can still get sacked. Like sack yeah, never you really can. goes it's away. Less, but uh, less, less. Yeah, but that, that I mean that's, that happens in every like I think it's kind of still. It happens in every that. format, obviously. Yeah, there's no need to say that. Well, we I think that it is that important times. to say that if you say that it's not really happening in Yada. I think it's important to provide the caveat that, uh, you know, sagging will happen in Yada. Like, there is There's a fair amount rat. of sagging that goes on um, in all these formats. But it's it's a matter of, like, what you're able to do against that sagging, I think. That really helps out a lot, too. Like, uh, you know, as you say, like, it does get slightly better because Graceful is down to one copy, right? Um, Mirage is I, also down to one copy. Mirage is down to one copy, too. Ring is down to one copy, right? Um, but I also think that the um, just like the the list really does make the pace of the format a lot better, right? Like without triple ring, um, you know, if the sack does happen, you still have time to recover, right? There is one ring left in deck, but uh, going for the call now is a bit interesting. I think generally you want to save the call for when the opponent goes for MST or something on the back row, because or duster or storm. Well, yeah, exactly. Or even true nade. No, exactly. You then <laughs> then you go for call. But it, the issue now is that, like, if Sol has an MST, they can chain the MST to the call, and that will pop the call before the Jinzo hits field. So Sol is going to let that go through. In fact, they were thinking, though, might mean that they do have an MST in hand. Um, so that is good information for Ben Labs to have. It could also mean that Sol's bluffing an MST as well. Um, so, yeah, it's good stuff. Coffee here kind of come down and rip a card out of the hand here, too. Hitting a dark, dark hole, hole, which is... I mean, that's a bit scary for Ben Lab because normally, if you've got a full field of monsters there, uh, your opponent won't rip out the Dark Hole. Um, so that is a bit oh. scary. Might mean that they got some stuff going on, brewing up in hand that can deal with this board. Um, or d didn't wait for the charity to decide. Well, you've got to decide the charity at that point. be activated first. Yeah, well, I mean, they something? activate Confi first, and I think that this makes sense because then you can tailor your discards to what your opponent has in hand as opposed to tailoring the hand rip to what you draw off charity, right? Hmm. So generally, I think it's this order reverse. is better. Pot I think, first. If what? it's pot first. Oh, yeah, you go pot first, you right? But like charity, because the discards are involved, you want to know what your opponent has in hand so that way you can tailor what your hand looks like after the charity to what they've got, right? Um. So this is the correct ordering for, for Soul, in my opinion, right? Other people can decide differently, like, and there, of course, there are cases where your hand is just, like, good enough where you're like, okay, uh, I can just go for charity now. Or, or you've got your discards lined up and you're like, okay, I can just go for charity now and then go for coffee based on what I draw. But most of the time in this format, you are going to be going uh, hand rip than charity, especially if it's, like, a knowledge hand rip. Pitching change, okay. very interesting here. Also, again, very scary for Ben Labs because this means that whatever they've got in hand is going to be pretty good here. Um, going for MST on the swords here. Uh, popping that. So the MST was there to pop the call potentially. Um, and another MST on the other back row there. Clearing that away too. Yeah. I'd be sweating if I was Ben Labs uh, here. They're going to book. So they're going to book down the Jinzo, which makes sense. If you have the read that the uh, Snatch Jewel's in hand, then uh, you definitely want to do that. Um, and if yeah. Sol did have the Snatch Jewel, they're probably like, damn, now, you know, now I can't do anything with the it. The rat, rat is a bad Snatch target. So exactly. Yeah, this is a so good idea. It's a, it's a rough spot to be in. So but it's the fact a good that target if you have change. Jinzo in hand. Well, the, the fact that it's they pitch target. change mean that I feel like they might not have Snatch in hand because I feel like, I mean, Snatch is a, a more permanent uh, taking, right? So like maybe you're like, well, I got yes. Snatch, so I can just take that instead. But uh, I feel like they've got other ways to deal with the board because like Snatch feeling a Jinzo and then attacking into a rat and then your opponent brings out a Momonga is like, or an Exile Force even, that's like really bad. <laughs> so uh, yeah. I feel like we... Soul's got some other things in store there. Oh, Sasuke. Oh. Sasuke is going to be kind of nice here. Uh, hitting over that Jinzo, getting rid of that. Now, Call is still on field, so if a Trunade is played, then, you know, Ben Labs can get that back. But oh. now they've got the Reborn for the Jinzo there. Whew, this, However, is, uh, this is rough stuff for sure. Azu is in hand. What? So it's not that Yeah, Bazoo is in hand, yeah. So Bazoo can clear the Jinzo. Um, honestly, I think uh, it might have been better to go for Reborn... Um, like next turn, right? But I guess Soul also doesn't want to get like blown out by the bazoo and the rat and stuff attacking in. But um yeah, I, I think he's that like going with the bazoo hitting over the Jinzo, uh, this is just 
kind of rough for Soul. Um, yeah, he's gonna be he's gonna be down cards anyway, so it doesn't matter. Like, Soul is just behind. Well, yeah, but I mean, the reason why Soul is behind now, like you know, both players drew a charity. You know, uh, Ben Love drew a pot, yeah. so that puts them up one card. But like, uh, you want to save the reborn for the Jinja, so that way you aren't just wasting cards. And like, yeah. this is it's kind of a waste. Like. And, you know, they admit, like, oh, I, I, I misplayed a bit here. They probably weren't thinking about the Bazoo hitting over the Jinzo next turn. But uh, yeah, they're probably just trying to protect against damage. But, yeah, this is going to be pretty rough to come back from. Probably forgot that Bazoo is still a bit broken. Yeah. Can banish well, anything. I think he remembers the errata. I think it's just he forgot the Bazoo could come out and hit over Jinzo, right? Like, I think it's yeah, just... Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, it, it's tough to manage everything going on, especially when you're trying to construct your turn to the best possible outcome. Um... So, yeah, definitely a bit rough for uh, Soul there. A Raigeki will help. Well, yeah, Raigeki or Darkle would obviously be busted, but, um, you know, that's one card out of 30, or one card out of 31 in the case of that top deck. So, um, yeah, tough stuff. And this is... Oh, Snatch will come down now. So, Snatch on the Bazoo. Um, so, that will take control of that. But a Ring is fired on Ooh. the Bazoo. That's a smart play there, dropping uh, Soul down to 25. And it's not quite lethal damage, but you're getting them down to 100 over the amount of attack you have on field. So it's pretty much lethal damage. Um, this any monster needs to off the be top near force. does it. Well, yeah, basically. Uh, it depends on what the monster or the card that Ben Labs drew is. If they drew a monster here and then they summon an out attack in, that's going to be pretty brutal. They're choosing to set it instead. Um, yeah. Generally, you want to set after everything happens. So that way your opponent has as little knowledge as possible here. Um, because, like, for instance, like, if if your opponent doesn't know that you've got, like, a random destruction in hand or not, right, then they might go for a certain play to play around that, as opposed to just being, well, okay, they don't have anything else besides this monster that they're setting, so I can just, you know, let that go through for a turn, right, because I'm still alive here. Um, so, yeah, but, like, it might not have mattered here. They might not have the Mirror Force in the back row, but um, Charity here is going to be pretty good. Charity can probably wrap up the game here. Um... Reborn and Call have both been used, so probably yeah. not really too many ways to access the Jinzo, but there probably are other ways to clear away that back row. Ooh. Uh, yeah, we saw Needle Sealing a bit earlier as well in one of the previous games against Hoi. Uh, but yeah, they're just going to go in and attack, you know, and that will be the yeah. end of the game. No Mirror Force in the back yeah. row there, so uh, yeah, good stuff. Going into a very intense Game 3. Um, both players have sort of, you know, been able to dominate the game in their respective wins. Um, but how will game three go? Yeah. Now we'll have a fun game three after the first two games were a little bit sacky. Um, although, you know, it wasn't really like, too, too sacky, you know, like, um, I think game two could have definitely gone a different way depending on what soul discarded or, uh, if they hadn't done the reborn play uh, when they did it, then maybe it could have gone a bit differently, but I will have to see exactly, um, what happens here. Because if they had done the Reborn play a bit differently, right? Like they had, uh, you know, Reborn the Jinzo, then snatched the Bazoo. Um, then things could have turned out uh, very, very differently. So Potentially. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because then the Lily Ring would have been have fired on the Bazoo. Uh, so it would have two powerful monsters. Even if they brought out like Exiled off the Giant Rat, um, then the Exiled pops the Jinzo and then you ring the Bazoo, but you're also down on life points a lot. So... Um, it's a bit of a tricky spot. And also, like, you can't easily bring out the Exiled off Rat because if Soul attacks optimally, then you probably... Uh, well, I mean, it's tough because Sangin can search out Exiled either way, but Soul probably wants the Sangin to search out the Exiled instead of the Rat bringing out Exiled because at least you have to commit your normal summon to the Exiled. And so it, it's a it's definitely a tough spot for sure, but it's, like, more even for both players. Uh, heavy coming down on that back row. A bit scary for Soul there. Uh, if you see that coming down, you know your opponent's probably going to make a big play. Um... Or they're just afraid of like ring or something. Change of heart coming down as well. Um, so Let's that will take control of the set. Yeah. And they'll be able to see what it is. It could just be a fiber jar. That'd be very funny. Um, it's a sand game. No, it's just sand game. Kind of a rough pick Basically. off change, but at least you can still get aggressive here with attacking in. Um, Both bait cards in a way. Snatch yep. deal is a good bluff card to deal with MST or snatch or heavy or duster. Yep, because it's going to die to that anyways, right? And especially dying yes. to MST, it doesn't get its effect off. Um, dying to heavy or, or harpies is kind of annoying because, like, you are you could have potentially used it here. But look, Ben Lab's set anyways, so, like, you know, ultimately, the snatch will not be getting much use um, in the near future. So, And Soul might have some better cards in hand. Sangan is also good to bait out change of heart, especially in yep. the early game. 
Because Jane Hart, right? Yeki, you Darkle, do with it? Uh, Exiled Force. A lot of things you can bait out. Uh, that's very good. Um, the only yeah. thing you don't really bait out is Knock, but Menlop might be, not be playing Knock. Um, you know, uh, it's also a 46 card deck. Oh! Fiber here coming down. That's going to be really good for Ben Labs. Shuffling back that same game, not having to worry about that. Soul is also normal summon to already. Um, so that yeah. means that uh, they won't be able to normal summon or set here, allowing Ben Labs to potentially attack and deal more damage on their next turn. Um, so, yeah. And there's no way to get to the gate Fiber Jar. So, Fiber Jar can just go through. Um, no Divine Wrath in this Gear format. Gear isn't not in the background. Really, it's lip oriented deck. So, you might not see Knock come in for that anyway. Yeah. Well, it's kind of interesting because Ben Lab's on sort of a hodgepodge, right? They're playing a lot of monsters that do get set, but also they are playing a lot of aggressive pressure like, you know, uh, Bazoo and things like yeah. that. So, uh, Fiber Jar come or not Fiber Jar, Forceful Sensor coming down here, shoveling back a card. Unga. Same back to saying again. Gone. Um, back into the deck it goes. And, uh, yeah. And so that will have to get shuffled after the hand has stopped being looked at. Um, it looks like they're on uh, Golem, Lava Golem, Lava Golem, Change of Heart, MST, Change and Karibo. Uh, very interesting uh. set of cards there. But I think that the uh, the Sangam was definitely the right pick because that's the aggressive pressure yeah. in the hand. You can play around Golem. The only monster uh, you could summon. Yeah, exactly. You could play around Golem, play around Change a bit. Karibo's annoying, but it does just de de uh, delay the inevitable if you are going for um, game. Uh, as long as you don't set up a too fragile board state. So uh, I think that this makes a lot of sense. And they're pitching a Sasuke here. And what else will they pitch? They're thinking about that other pitch. They're going to pitch a Gear Freed as well. Ooh, Gear tough. Freed. Tough card to, to pitch there. Um, they're just going to uh, pass back. No not call playing the, the MST. Yeah. It couldn't even set Call of the Haunted because the MST is present. Yeah. Uh, you've got no targets in Grave to really bring back profitably if the MST, like, blind the Call of the Haunted. So... Um, yeah, looks like Ben Lodge is going to set one pass. Probably the MST. Uh, Wang Yu coming down. That's pretty good here. Uh, and Wang Yu is going to attack in for 17. Deal in that 17. Now, Karibo is going to come down on that. That is interesting. Um, mm. That That's definitely interesting because I feel like you generally want to save Karibo for the Golem if that comes down. Ooh, but I guess Soul is going to play around the Golem anyways. But like... I don't know. If you think about the average attack of a monster in Soul's deck, right, you can... That just seemed very weird. Uh -oh. to me. Especially because, like, also, um, if, for instance, like, let's say Soul just attacks him with Wang Yu every turn, like, for 17. You can just save Karibo for later, for a later attack. Um, I don't know. It, it's not terrible. If you've got ways to deal with Wang Yu outside of the Karibo, then I guess it makes sense. Um, but in general, I'm like, eh, I, I don't know. It really does depend on the last card in... Um, Ben lobs his hand here. Like if it's ring or something, then it can be good just getting the Kribo in, and then you ring the Wang Hu, and then that's something. But uh, they're gonna take the seventeen there, and main two is still gonna play into the lava golem. Nope, they're just gonna pass back to Ben Labs. I think that is the smart play there. Um, bad idea to do so. What? A bad idea to do so. Yeah, exactly. So you don't want to play into the lava golem, and uh, it looks like Ben Lab is just going to set two more pass back to Soul thing. You don't have heavy, you don't have harpies, and even if you do, I got maybe some insurance against it. Maybe there's an IO back there, uh, for instance, or a ring, or a just ring. But you know, um, you'd have to have multiple chainable traps to really make this worth it. Like setting all three. Um, but I mean, we'll, we'll have to see exactly what they do here. It looks like uh, Soul is going to attack in with that Wang Hu again. Book coming down on the Wang who's setting that down. And Soul cannot flip that up because it did declare an attack. Also, battle position rules work a bit differently in this format. But uh, it looks like Soul is going to pass back to Ben Labs here. And what will Ben Labs do? They're just going to go for Graceful. Graceful is really good here. Um, and, you know, this can pitch the Golem, which Soul is just playing around. So Golem is a bit dead here anyways. And uh, it can, you know, pitch another card from hand as well. Get two good ones in hand. So, Could very powerful Jinzo. top deck. Could be Hellpomer, Serpent, yada yada. Yeah, if they draw into those. Um, but even if they don't, then uh, Wang Yu has 1,000 defense. Um, 1,700 and 1,000. Yep. Um, so, it looks like they're thinking they might have a monster just to summon out here to attack over the Wang Yu. Like a Witch of the Black Forest or something. Yeah. Um, anything but Sangan, Magician of Faith, Baibajar, I think. Mamanga, like um, yeah, yeah, those those would not be able to hit over the Wenghu. Uh, 
Oh, okay. Uh, judge question, it looks like, um, is being asked, what is... This one I think it is. Well, we'll have to see what the judge question is when they ask it. Um, because it, it might be something around exile. It could just be something else. Uh, can Lava Golem be summoned off Graceful or off uh, from the graveyard? Uh, let's just quickly look up Lava Golem here. The it text cannot. exactly. Uh, it says must, must first, first be, be special, special summon summoned from hand. So, uh, nope. Uh, must first be. No, I believe not. Um, I mean, no, could, Lava Golem's always been like We could that. look up the original errata of this, but uh, I believe it was just uh, always always like it is. Um, but the the nice thing is that, like, uh, you know, Yugipedia, it does have the uh, old erratas. Um, this monster must, yeah, be, must special be special summoned, summoned on your opponent's side of the field. Of the field, by, field by offering so, two monsters on your opponent's side of the field as a tribute. Yeah, so it will indeed uh, not be able to be summoned from Grave. So yeah. it looks like they're Though going to it... pitch a Mamanga, and uh, they're going to pitch something else here. Probably, the, I mean, I think you just pitch the Golem, honestly. Like, Soul's going to play around Golem the entire time they know you have it. So, like, you might as well pitch the Golem. You yeah. can't get it back, but, oh, pitching a Needle Ceiling. Okay. Um, I don't know. It's just, like, it's one of those awkward things yeah. where, like, uh, they don't oh. call to bring back Mamanga, but Mamanga can't get over the Wangu. Um, it can get around it, though. It can, yeah, because, you know, it sets it face down. So I believe that Wangu will not pop the sets because it doesn't know the stats on them. I could be wrong about yes. that. Um, That's correct. But um, I think he's trying to force Soul into summoning another monster. Yeah, but like Soul never really has to do that because they know they know about Lava Gold and they're not going to commit into the Lava Gold until they have a way to deal with it, right? So like, I think you just like Lava Gold can put your opponent in an awkward spot, but like I think what you got to do is you just got to be like, well, uh, they're not going to play into the. I guess they are uh, playing into the Lava Gold, but they probably have a way to deal with this somehow. Um. So yeah. Um. Or Soul doesn't realize Momanga gets around Wangu. Yeah, I believe it gets around Wangu at least. Um, yeah, it's not face up. Like it's not normal or special summoned. Yeah. Um It well Mamanga is special summoned, but it's in face down defense. So I, I can I can double check no this. I can pull up the Wanghu rulings, but like um I believe it does work this way. It's always Should. good to double check, you know. Um when you rulings and okay, when monster flip summon or flip face up, uh, uh, no, some special summon monster, monster that are summoned face down are not destroyed by Wangu. Yep, um, yeah, yes, um. Uh, any monster. So on attack deck, uh, it looks like Blast of Chain is probably coming down. Or Ring. Ring can come down as well. So, uh, yeah. Um, Ooh. Yeah, that, that is, works. That is the way to do it. Um, so that's going to deal. Uh, ben Lop should lose another thousand here. Um, because... Uh, or no, gain no. He should lose another thousand as well because he gained a thousand for Mamanga, so they both lose a thousand for the ring, right? Yep. Okay. Looks like they're they're working it out. Yep. There you go. And yeah. And then this is going to be um, thirty five hundred more damage attacking in as well. So Soul could potentially have another ring here, in which case uh, setting ring and then baiting out the golem summon uh, would just be the end of the game for Ben Labs. Uh, which is, you know, it's part of, like, what I've been saying, where, like, or ring on the gear free, it's also just game here. Um, but, like, it, it's kind of, like, part of, of what I've been saying with the golems, is that, like, 
Yeah. It, it's just very awkward because like you're like your opponent's not going to play into it until they can get around it, right? And so yes, yeah, it's a it's a bit. They already could there. with the ring set, but yeah, I now they've got a reason that, to, I guess. Um, yeah, I think that Ben Labs reviving the Momonga might have cost the game. Who knows? Well, so you want to do it before the Wong gets flipped up. So, uh, okay, Blast coming down oh, on the Gear Freed. Oh, so that might pop the Gear Freed itself, uh, which would be funny. Uh, it could also pop the Mirage, depending on what they drew. Okay, it looks like they're going to pop the Mirage there. So uh, they're getting the Mirage um, online before the Lava Golden can come down and get rid of the Gear Freed. So that makes a lot of sense. But, um, yeah, I think, like, the main thing here was the pitches off graceful. Um, but yeah. I, I don't know necessarily what else they're... Uh, I mean, the if you keep golem. needle sealing, it doesn't really do much. Um, it, yeah, so I, I don't know. But uh, I guess setting the Momonga could have been better there as well. Yeah. So, yeah. And then you've got so, the ball bring it back. But I don't... It's a little weird. Nobody tried to bring the Ring of Destruction barrel behind the door combo. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that combo is kind of like... A bit janky. It's a little bit all in. Slightly. Um, Though it's also pretty strong. Like I mean if you boom, pull it off, you just but win like, the game instantly. It's off of it's not really that golems. consistent. And your opponent can also just play barrels as well. And the part yes. of the most awkward thing about it is that if your opponent is on barrels and they play a barrel before you can use your barrel because they've got the priority to respond to what you activate, then you don't get to barrel, right? Because barrel this can't game? be used on a barrel. Um so uh, going out on their own. I respect it, Ben Labs. I respect it. Uh, uh, three doing that shy. 3K. Uh, three GG's three GG's in D. Five point shy of a draw. Yeah. But again, that's part of like what uh, Soul knew there uh, going into it, right? So Yes. Like... Yeah. And there we go. GG's for both players. Very intense ones in the end there. Uh, definitely a very tricky game. But uh, yeah. I mean, Lava Golem, it's definitely a powerful card in this format, but it can be very tricky. Yeah, the game definitely was good in game three. No, like, super sacks, uh, you know, game one or two. Um, well played on both sides. As, yeah. Well, as best as they could. Yeah. But uh, anyway, we got the final game now between Soul and Dump Truck. Uh, so that should be an exciting one there. Um, both players have uh, managed Gear to win locals and... multiple times in the past, so it'll be cool to see Gear which Freed one comes on top. Gear versus hand control is what it time. looks like. Huh? I haven't seen Gear Freed versus hand control is what it looks like. I haven't seen much of Dumb Truck other than like Spirit Reaper, Don Zalug, and the like. No, you were the one that uh, played him, right? Yeah, so... I played him, but I didn't see his match against Aratos, if there was one. Mm. Uh, well, let's like... see if looks like Dumb Truck's hosting now. So, yeah. the final match Soul of the night. Let me know in last. chat who do you think is going to win? Is it going to be Dump Truck or is it going to be Soul? Uh, both very good players. So, uh, who's going to win? Uh, all three of you watching, let me know in chat. <laughs> uh, or not all three. If you don't want or it, now. you don't have to. But, but uh, you know, if, if you do want it, then uh, definitely uh, sound off in chat. Who do you think is going to win? And it, could either, it could go either way, honestly. Both players are very good players, and they're both on very good decks from what I've seen of them. Um, and yeah, so it should be good. Soul has been playing uh for a lot longer in a row than uh Dump Truck has, so that might take a toll on Soul there. Um, like just you know, the exhaustion after playing so many matches in a row. Um, and I'll say, Soul go win this tournament, yeah. I mean, it would be cool if they they rose all the way up from like the bottom of the uh, like not the like it, it, the bottom of like the the unlucky match, right? Because like. They got put in this match here that was here because of a buy, and they had to climb their way all the way to the top. Um, so it would definitely be cool to see Soul take it all here. Um, Soul's going to go for a coffee here, ripping a card out of the hand for 1,000. They get full knowledge here as well. It's a very, very good start for Soul. And what will that knowledge bring them? What will be the fruits of this confiscation? What's in the treasure chest? What will it be? I do think of the artwork on the hand rips, I like Coffee's artwork the best. Um, 
just because it, it it seems most representative of what the card is. Like Forceful Sentry, sure, it's like it's like a guy going like this and being like back into the deck with you, right? But like you don't see him pushing the guy back in the deck. You know, you just you just see him doing this, right? And like Duo is like just two two guys or two two imps or whatever. Uh, and they represent like the they're both taking a card, right? But like it's just not as evocative yeah. as like confiscation is, right? Um so I like Confi a bit better. But uh Graceful coming down here as well. Also as a note, soul playing around the duo here. Um just keeping one card in hand, setting three. If Dump Truck draws into a heavy or harpies, then that's going to be pretty brutal for Soul. Um but uh yeah, Soul says I deserve that TBH. I mean that that can happen. You know, the hand ups can be a bit balanced out by these uh gracefuls. And it looks like uh Jinzo's coming back off the reborn there. So uh yeah, and also D hole's gone, so that's one less card that uh Soul knows about. They still know about a fair amount of cards though. Um now the question is, will Dump Trick also go for a change of heart on the set? Uh or are they just gonna attack in? It looks like they're just gonna attack in. Hitting a sand game. I think attacking in was the right play there. You knew it wasn't fiber, or very unlikely that it would be fiber, because there's no way that Soul fires coffee, then sets fiber, because they're just down at that point. Um, I mean, there are cases where they would do that. Their rest of their hand is just awful. Uh, they want to make sure the fiber goes through, but like most of the time, they're not going to do that. So I think not using the change here is good. Uh, bring out a Dawn, that's a bit scary for Dump Truck here, because, you know... Um, having that Dawn Never attacking mind. is rough, but the duo coming up, uh, hitting in there getting rid of those two cards from hand and then going for mirage oh. here on top of it uh soul thinking about that mirage like do they want it to go through uh you can always wait until draw phase of your turn uh to decide that sort of thing so you know that's something to consider uh but it looks like they are just going to msc the mirage here in yeah. the end phase of dump truck's turn so it's all gonna draw Don't now i to get too far behind well yeah you can just do it in draw phase right so yeah just to have a better idea of what you've got um but yeah, I believe, so they know Change of Heart and Mirror Force are both set. So they know the sets exactly. Um, so that is at least a good uh, sort of advantage that they have um, on Dump Truck here. They're going to go for Rhoda here, Ooh. probably bring an Exile to hand, um, I would assume. Have to. And then you pop That's... the Jinzo. Um, that would make the, the most sense answer. to me. There are some other outcomes that could happen. Um, but, you know, Exile popping Jinzo makes, it's, it's the clearest play. But we don't know what else yeah. Soul has. If they got Snatch Deal or something like that, maybe you go for something else. Um, but yeah, there's Exile. There's exile. And uh, that's going to be able to get rid of that Jinzo. This does turn on Dump Truck it's... Mirror Force, but you know about the Mirror Force, so you can play around a little bit. Both players also even on life points here. Um, and Soul actually, like, slightly... Well, I guess they're pretty even on cards here as well. Soul's slightly on the Relative. back foot in terms of cards yeah. because of the duo, but wow, well, that Harpies. Ooh. Ooh. Well, Io coming down, Ooh. and the other draw was the MST. Brutal, brutal stuff there. That, oh, that is just rough. That is, oh, that is so rough. The exact sequence exactly of cards that Dump Truck needed wants. to punish Soul the most. Whew, brutal stuff. Uh, saying and coming down as well to hit in for a thousand. Um, checking yeah, Grave to see exactly what's in what there. he wants. Yeah, exactly. Because if this gets no cleared, hand. then they get another card to hand. And in a top deck world Limited like this, resources. that is very vital. Um, the awkward thing, too, is that Soul knows about the Mirror Force in the back row. So, like, they can't even really attack in the Sangan easily. Um, because then they're going to lose their monster. So, even if they draw... And even if they set the monster, Dumbdrick gets change of heart as well to take control of that monster. To then, like, flip it up and attack in. Like, yeah, it's, like it, it's like a lose-lose situation for Soul, whatever they get here. Um, and there's Doesn't no even IO have anymore. To hmm? Use the mirror force on that one monster because of Sangan. Yeah, you don't need just to, but like I'm just saying, I'm just saying, like in the case that Soul would even want to, he can't really do it. Right? Um, so taking control of a witcher, which is something at least bringing on another witch as well. Uh, Soul thinking they could be on TTs. We do see one TT there. They could be on more. Um, but yeah, there's gonna be a lot of damage potentially because. I, I feel like you just flip up the witch and attack in with it, right? Like, unless you've got a knock hiding back there. But, uh, you know, other than that, I, you just flip it up, attack in. Like, get in for uh, 3,200 points of damage. TT coming down, though, so that will pop everything here. So, Soul yes. will get a search as well. Um, yeah, I think, honestly, Maybe. Dump Truck probably should have flipped up the witch 
but I guess this is still fine. Um, cause, like, if you flip a yeah. witch before summoning your own witch, then that might bait soul into using the TT like there, and then you've got the priority to summon another monster. Um, but either way, this is fine. Like, soul probably wouldn't have used TT if, after you flipped up the witch because you can always search out like Dawn if you're playing that oh. back in. And yeah, Wangyu is really good here. Um, however, into the face of a Mirror Force, not really the best. And a Gemini Elf added to hand to get over the Wangyu. Also, Dumpfrit gets another card as well. So it's just brutal stuff here. On Zaluk, Spirit Reaper. They could search out anything, honestly. Like Yada coming down. Yada. And I think that makes a lot of sense because you've got the advantage here on cards. And you just want to cut your opponent off from getting these cards. So uh, I think this makes a lot of sense here. Um... I don't even know what you do with your soul. Like, I, I don't... Maybe you just summon the Wangu just to stop uh, if your opponent has a way to get back, like Jinzo, and hit over the Wangu, and then you've also got Yada to attack direct. But I don't know. There's not really a good option for you. Bring out Wangu here. Setting one, passing back. Yeah, you don't want to play in the Mirror Force. But uh, this is brutal, because now Dumpfrick just brings out Gemini Elf, tries to attack over the Wangu, um, and then you're still in a bind. So... I mean, if they've got, like, Ring or other things like that, then that can stop the Elf, at least. And you kind of have to stop this Elf, uh, or else you're just too far behind, and then your component can just yada you to death. But, uh, yeah, exactly. Don't give up till the there last is. card is played. And uh, they definitely do still have some cards left. Ring is definitely one of them. That deals 19. Uh, now, this turn, they could potentially draw into something else that they can commit to field after they attack in with Wang Hu here. So it definitely is still both players' game. Uh, Mirage coming down. Ooh. Mirage actually does dodge a bit around the Yada a little bit. So uh, they didn't get them back into the game. It's Mirage. They also do still have all three copies of MST left in deck. Yeah. So uh, still couldn't commit to an attack here. Yeah, I mean that makes sense because Mirage you know been MST. Yeah. Uh, Jinzo. All coming down for the Jinzo. This could potentially shut off the draws with Yada. If they've got an MST in the back row, do you commit it here or do you wait? I think you honestly do commit it here. You just pop the call because you can't let your opponent do the Yada lock. Uh, otherwise, um, like you're in a tough spot with Mirage. Um, of course, if you draw MST, Unless that's very good. IO but, um, but yeah, it's tough. No IO in the back row for Soul um, because... Dumb Chuck might flip the IO to get the Jinzo out so he can, yada. Dump truck might flip the eye. Well, yeah, if you chain MST to it, but you're losing in that case yeah. anyways, right? So, yeah, doesn't really matter too much. Um, it negates the Mirage, so... Yeah, that, well, that's what I'm... It, if there was IO in the back row, they probably would have fired it already. And also, like, it doesn't really change things here too much. Um, either way, with the MST, you probably just... I, I would use it on the call. I, I get why you wouldn't use it on the call as well, because, you know, Dumptrick still can't summon out. Oh, oh, going for a call of their own. Uh, Yeah, not anything too good to get there, but maybe you can bring back, like, a Sangin or Witch, get a search. Looks like they are indeed going to do that, so the Witch will get popped. They will get a search off the Witch. Um, What are they going to search here? They could search out a Serpent. Um, There are a couple different options that you could search with that Witch. Exile is engraved, so you can't bring that. Um, you couldn't bring it. Yeah, well, yeah, well, Dumpfrog's attacking over the Wang Hu, so, so yeah. Exile should be online to bring out afterwards anyways. But um, Yeah, it's a tough search. You could just... Yeah, Fiber Jar. I think Fiber Jar is a good option uh, because you are far behind. Well, Ooh. Snatch is going to be the end of the game, so yeah. Uh, yep, that's that's uh, that's the end of the game there. Uh, nothing that really could have been Wait, was done. Was it the end of the game? What? Yeah, that was the was end of the game. Was it the end of the game? It would like been 41, 43 damage unless there was another big monster in hand. Soul, Soul had less than 4,100 points of life left. Mm. So that was 4,100 points on board. So that's lethal. Um, yeah, Goblin is like, you like realistically, the only thing that that play loses to is uh, Change or Snatch. And like Change was gone. So I think it made sense to go for which I, I think that was the correct play uh it's just sometimes yeah, the opponent both, does have the thing to win um yeah if both were available then yeah i would have gone yeah, even if both were available i don't even necessarily think instead. it's the best yeah, move like, like but uh, yeah one was gone it's so like it was a good risk to make yeah it's not even like it's i, I think it's the correct move because like goblin only plays around those like it, it's it's a bit awkward like 
even even with it, it's like not the best because you just take control of the goblin, attack over the Wang Hu, attack in for 24, and you're still in a really rough spot. You've got like 300 life points left or something. So that is, you're still dying, like imminently. Um, so I think going for the witch there is always the right pick. But uh, Comfy here, uh, ripping a card out of the hand. And also getting to see the knowledge of the hand. Now, this is how Soul started their last game, too. And they did manage to um, end up losing that one. So, that means that, like, it's definitely isn't the end of the game here, despite the hand rip. Oh. But uh, depending on the what the hand is, it could force, potentially be. Just playing around that meant pressure couldn't be put on. So. Well, you, you had to play around Mirror Force there, or else you'd lose. Yeah, I know. Like, it, yeah. I'm saying it couldn't be put on. They couldn't put damage in. So that gave Dump Truck the time to do what he did and win the game. Yeah, but there was no, like, I mean, that's it's kind of silly because that's, you know, again, Soul could not attack into Mirror Force or else they'd lose the game. So, like, it, it's saying it, like, the, the way that you said it is kind of kind of silly because, like, you, you're making it like, oh, well, you know, Soul did this and that allowed Dump Truck to do this. Well, Soul could not do that. Like, so uh, it's it's kind of... A weird framing. But anyways, so we're going to go for painful here. Send forceful for one. Uh, and then four others. Uh, we know soul is a bit of a hater of duo. So maybe not duo in the deck. Uh, in which case they won't be sending that off painful. So the question is, what are the other painful cards here? Looks like a mirage. Mirage. They could send triple mirage. Uh, that'd be kind of funny. Or they've got a mirage in yes. hand. They could send double. Um, got to getting sent. That's an interesting pick. That's the current option to choose. Probably, yeah. Um, especially because you've got Io. Um, I guess Io could shut off Mirage. So, like, you could also just be fine with Mirage getting fired. Um, but Soul would still get the draws off the first Mirage. So, like, it's not really the best. Uh, it does allow Soul to waste an MST on that Mirage, which that MST is not going towards your Io. So, like, that is good at least. Snatch steal. Um, snatch is probably actually, well, yeah. Snatch is maybe the pick because again with the IO, it's like, yeah. Also, like snatch into Reaper isn't really the best thing. It does pop the Reaper, but it's not the torrential tribute. Yeah. Um, I feel like of these, it really, yeah. Mirage is getting there's picked, Mirage, yeah. and it, it's sort of like what I was saying with like, it makes sense because like. Io can shut the Mirage off if it becomes a, a problem, but also, you know, if they've got MST for the Mirage, you want them to be using the MST on the Mirage and not on your Io. So that makes some sense. Uh, Graceful's coming down anyway, so this is going to draw three pitch two. Um, so that's going to be good anyways. Um, let's see what they pitch. Definitely is a very commanding position for Soul to be in. Because uh, they can sculpt their hand based on what they know Dump Trick has. Um, and, you know, Dump Trick could come back. We did see that last game. But it definitely is definitely much more favored in Soul's position here. This um, time, yes. Yeah. I Then again, this was kind of what happened it, last time, too. So anything can can change. So Grace will come down pitching a Moth and a Mirror Force here. Um, both yeah, good pitches, I, I think. I think Soul is... Definitely in a better position this time than he was in Duel 1. Oh, yeah. Oh, Rhoda. Uh, Rhoda coming down as well, searching out Exile to pop something that uh, Dump Truck might have. Popping Reaper. the Reaper. Because Reaper can't be uh, popped otherwise. Bring out Goblin as well. Uh, setting 1 and going for Mirage. Okay. Uh, I feel like... I mm, Okay, setting another 2. I was going to say, I feel like if you couldn't set everything there, like you'd want to go for... Wow, MST off the top. Or no, MST was in hand. Okay, yeah. So MST was uh, why Dump Trick allowed uh, the Mirage there. Yeah. Um, so, so that makes sense. Dump it's Truck has trade. an option here. So, yep, they're just going he, to set two, pass back to Soul. Yeah. He and, uh, knows about the Exiled, so he could just allow, set the Witch instead. Yep. I, I think that probably is what he did, uh, I would assume, because the he knows that Soul's only other monster in hand is Exiled. So... Setting the witch uh, is a bit better into this board, I think, than setting the reaper. Um, can you force soul into this awkward position of like, is it reaper? Is it witch? Like, do I just go for exile to pop the set? Like, just in case, do I not? Like, 
Well, Regeki anyways clears oh. it, so you know that that's sort of no oh. at that point. Io coming down, but Soul didn't know about the Io. Uh, interesting. Okay, so they they played into the Io a little bit, but maybe they're trying to bait out the yeah. Io activation there because they don't have many other good spells. They're just gonna pass back to Dumpdrek here. Dumpdrek has to keep paying the seven if they want to keep Io up. If they don't, then you know that's pretty good for Soul because now their spells are online. Uh, looks like another set there, setting another as well, passing back to Soul. We can play a bit more into Both the board wipes because Raigeki is gone. So, um, yeah. Both are probably now set at this point, which means yes. it's a 50-50 for the Exiled Force. Yeah, exactly. Well, what the Exile can do is it can just attack into one and then tribute off for the other. So, it doesn't really matter there. Um, I mean, Mirror Force could be a set here, which in case... Uh, Soul does go for the Exile Force attack into one of the sets, then that'd be annoying. Ooh. Looks like they set the Reaper first. Okay. Um, flipping up mm. a Witch here, asking for a response, might mean that Dump Truck has a TT in the back row. Um, and TT would be good here because then you search off the Witch. Uh, but it looks like they are thinking about this, so maybe they don't have the TT there. Maybe they got something else. No, they do have the TT, they do. so that will pop everything. Uh, popping the Witch, popping and the, set the is, Reaper. was the Reaper. Um, so Didn't draw a monster. Or they just didn't want to commit uh, whatever new monster they drew. Um, so, that witch is going to search out a monster from deck, and that monster will have to contend with Exiled. But if it's something like Sangan, then, you know, that's fine. Now, if you want to get more aggressive, you can pick a monster that's not Sangan, but it looks like Sangan will Anza be the pick So, oh, bring it at Gemini. Oh. Okay, so it looks like they had an aggressive monster anyways. Um, Soul's that's thinking now, meant. do they have a TT there? Do they they can't have a mirror force because mirror force is in grave? Do they have a ring? Ring could be an option. Um, yeah, ring would push IOs down further, like yep. the time limit to keep it up. But it looks like that Gemini Elf is going to attack in there. No ring getting fired. That to me signals that it's not a ring because I feel like if it's ring, you just activate the ring on the elf just to keep the life points like somewhat equalized, also to cause a swing in tempo here. Um, because otherwise, you're just bleeding out life points every turn to the elf. Um, so I feel like you kind of just got to ring the elf, but uh, not summing out the exile, popping the elf either. So this means that I feel like, yeah, they've got the ring now. So now that will pop the elf and they'll both take 19 here. Yep. But now Dump Truck can also commit something else to field, for instance, like a Sangan that they got in hand. This is so it looks like they're going to set that. This is two IO turns now taken off. Yes, which is part of the power of ring here. You know, it, it cuts down on how many IO payments you can make. Um, however, the, the real power of IO here is that if Dump Truck has enough time, they can just shut off IO whenever they draw whatever power spell they need. So that's the really like scary thing about IO here. Um, yes. you know, Dump Truck can still pay for it for five turns, but there's more than enough to draw into what they might need. So they are indeed going to pay for it again, trying to shut off whatever souls got. And they probably have the read that the set is not a, um, exiled, right? Because like, why would you set exiled here? Um, could be a Zalug. Oh, well, Jinzo oh. coming down. So Jinzo will negate the IO, allow Dump Truck to use spells. They also get to search out a card with the Sand Gans, so that's very good for them there. Um, the Serpent, if Charity's in hand. Yep, or a variety of things. We'll just have to see what they search out. I mean, they could just have game here if they've got, like, a change of heart um, to pair with the Jinzo, but... Yeah, yes. I mean, we'll, we'll have to see what they've got. This is definitely a very commanding position to be in, despite the life points being relatively even. Jinzo, super powerful card. Oh, yeah. Once more. Searching out a Reaper, so that way they can continue to get aggressive later. Also serve defensively as well, because they figured the Exile is probably going to go into the Jinzo. Um, Reborn as well. Ooh. Reborn on their Witch. I think that does make sense. Um, yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, yes. Poking in for damage and also uh, getting a search here. Soul can indeed I'm still done. win. That is correct, Ben L. It's a very tough spot for them to be in, but now their spells are back online because of the IO being negated by the Jinzo. So that really can cause anything to happen here. So especially after a Sangan search, allowing them to get something good from deck, uh, Soul can still win. I agree with you. Uh, it just is a very basically, tough spot to be in for sure. Searching out a witch basically, is not necessarily a good sign. Dumb Chuck is in range to lose this game. If the yes, cards are but, right. But uh, so is Soul, which is the tough thing. Now, Graceful Charity will help a lot here. It can help sculpt potentially a winning hand. Um, yeah, very tricky, though. Mirage getting pitched, of course. That's not really the best here. Um, 
And what else will they pitch? They got to think about this exactly because this is a very, very impactful turn. Um, very tough stuff here, for sure. Yeah, this is this is a big thinker. They might have a line. They might just be calculating it, but it's clearly it's not an easy line if they've got it. Because if it was an easy line, yeah. they would just you know slam down that line uh, as quickly as possible. Get what? MST here, so that MST is not being used on the IO, going for pot as well uh, because unless they're trying to end he the has game another here, one. So. Um, yeah, unless he has another one. Well, you could have another one as well, but I feel like that would have been a much easier pick here for for discards because, like, only one smaller trap on field. You're trying to end the game this turn, uh, most likely. Yes. And, uh, so, yeah, pot coming down. Uh, Soul's thinking here about exactly what to do. That means that they might have a lethal line or a line that's very, very close to lethal. So, definitely very scary for Dump Truck. What power spells do they have left? They still have change. They still have Snatch. Oh, no, Snatch isn't great, but they still have change. Um, they've got Dark Hole. Dark Hole. Um, Reborn. Yep. Summon Exiled Force uh, after getting rid of... Okay, Exiled coming down here. Uh, this, to me, implies that they probably don't have... Oh, well, they got changed. Yeah, they got changed on Jinzo. Yeah. That'll be 13 plus 1,000, and then you tribute off to pop the Jinzo in main two. Uh, that, to me, seems like what Soul is going for here. Um, but, yeah. Whoops. Need to put that on Do Not Disturb in the future. But now... Uh, looks like that's going to attack in for a thousand. And what are they gonna do? They're gonna tribute off yep. the exile to pop the Jinzo indeed. I'll get rid of that. And uh and now Dumb Truck has a choice. On set two and pass back to Dumb Truck. Does he pay for that final IO or does he get rid of it now? Now yeah, looks like he's gonna he get, get rid of it. Now. Uh prevent going down to three hundred and painful's gonna get fired here as well. Soul's going to think about that. If they've got an IO of their own, they might want to fire it here. Uh, that will indeed go through. So, people going to send five, uh, potentially getting a lethal combination here. Uh, what do we know in hand? We know about a Reaper in hand. Uh, but Gemini being L. so low, you don't necessarily want to summon out Reaper and attack. Um, no. I believe the Reaper is the thing we know about. Yeah, because which Reaper... Gemini Elf was well? searched. Hmm? Gemini Elf was searched by the Witch. So we know, okay, we'll know Gemini three Elf of the cards in hand. Yeah. So Gemini Elf and Reaper are in hand then. Um, and we just need that last card in hand. And so probably knows this as well. And so probably thinking, like, what cards, what five can Dump Truck honestly send here that uh, wins them the game? And there aren't really a good five to pick from. So going for Double Graceful, Pot, Harpies, and is there a Heavy as well? Um, maybe no Heavy I... in the deck. But uh, babe, if there is and ring, okay. That. I respect those yeah. five. I think those five are pretty ring, good. Probably. It, it, uh, it depends on what it Soul's depends. got. It really does depend on yeah, what Soul's if got. Soul has their own ring. This game is over. Um, it depends on what Dumb Truck does. But uh, yeah, that's what I mean. If he has, if because Soul has twenty one hundred life points and Dumb Truck like doesn't need to put the pressure, but I It'd think it's nice. Well, I think it depends on what soul has here, really. Like, uh, I think yeah. most of the time you are picking ring, but depending on what your back row is, you could give them the harpies. Um, and it really just does depend on what you've got. Yeah. If there is IO, though, it's strange you would be activated here. Yeah, I feel like IO is maybe not, good discipline. I feel like IO is not in the back row because you don't necessarily want to let Dump Truck deck then here as well. Um, yeah, it's pot, two charity, ring, and duster. Um, yeah, and ring is yeah, getting ring given as expected, yeah. which generally is what you'd give. But uh, this is a bit telling about what Soul's back row is. Um, this confirms basically that there's no IO in the back row. Um, Spirit so Reaper, no spell, probably the Reaper. Yep. Um, just having that set there as insurance in case uh, you don't necessarily want to summon out the Reaper and attack into Soul and then just get killed on the crackback, right? So, um, call yeah. the haunted is available, so that could be flipped for exiled and dump truck can't respond to that. Yep, that's if uh, they have the call set. 
Um, and Call would also be a bit of a defensive card here um, because, oh, well, MST on the set, Never getting mind. rid of the ring before it can be used. I uh, think that makes a lot Dark of sense. Dark Hole? And uh, could be Dark Hole, could be, there are a lot of things that win soul the game here. Gear Freed coming down, Blast on the Gear Freed to pop the there set it is. there. And yep, that's going to well. be the end of the game. So very, very good stuff. Very intense stuff. And as Ben L said, Soul can still win. Soul did still win. Uh, and the last, the duel isn't over until the last card is played. Very, very true. Very wise words. So, very good stuff here. Intense stuff, indeed. Um, so, I'm excited to see how game three goes. Now, Dumpfrick will be starting here. So, that could okay. to give them an advantage. Quickly, I have to head out now. So, quickly okay. before well, I go, Yada lives this tomorrow, 1 p.m. Yep. EST. Yeah, it's Jan Joe's Yada I'm joining tournament. If you're interested. Yep. So prize is the LOD Yada. Have a good night. Yeah. Or morning or whatever. You too. But uh yeah, we're going into the finals game here. Uh diving in, seeing what is going on. Coffee. Coffee's been in the opener every game. Uh no matter who who plays, uh, you know, coffee's always here. Um yeah, final duel of the tournament, bottom barrel budget games. That is very true. And it's a hype final duel of the tournament. Hitting a graceful off that coffee. But that still leaves a rotor ring, TT, and Sangan. So um, pretty good hand for Soul's part. But, you know, Dump Truck does have some ways to play around it. Hitting the graceful, though, I think is the correct move. Old Duo is going to be very good as well here. Going for coffee before Duo. Just checking if, uh, I guess, Serpent's in hand. I feel like if I was Dump Truck, I would have gone Duo, then coffee. The reason for that is if Serpent's in hand anyways, your duo is not really going to be useful, right? So, like, I feel like go, just going for duo first. Like, if they've got Serpent, they've got Serpent. It's just kind of sad. Um, but at least you hit one random card out of their hand. And then you can sort of pick the last remaining good one in there. Um, so, uh, I mean, this order isn't necessarily the worst thing in the world. You can save duo for later, potentially. You also aren't paying a 1,000. And if you've got Fiber Jar set up, that could be good. But, uh, yeah, I, I feel like uh, I would go duo coffee here, but... Uh, Sangin Ring is still a formidable hand on Soul's part. Sangin gets them a search. Ring can pop whatever Dub Trick brings out. So, you know, this is still a pretty good setup here. Um, but yeah, we are going to see what Soul does. They're going to set one, set another. And pass back to Dump Truck. Graceful getting fired here. Drawing three and pitching two. Uh, very good at sort of fixing Dump Truck's hands. They need the fixing there. But uh, kind of rough for Soul on such a limited um, game state here. Pitching a Reaper. And what else are they going to pitch here? I guess Reaper isn't really the best, but because like Soul could just search out Serpent, right? Um, yeah, JUC, I, I agree in this case. Like in this format, I think it's generally optimal to duo coffee. Um, because like, if the Sherbin is in hand, like, your duo is dead anyways, right? Like, what are you going to do? Like, not use the duo if Sherbin's in hand? Like, if you've got forceful duo, then there's a bit more of a conversation there because then it's like, well, okay, they've got Sherbin in hand. You want to forceful that back in the deck, so then your duo is more online, right? But uh, I think, like, duo coffee is, is a bit awkward. Oh, the pro gear freed set here. Wow. Fun stuff. Forceful now coming down to send back the Sangan. So maybe they had the, the forceful in hand as well. Uh, in which case, it would be optimal. You go Confi, uh, then, well, you could just say it's optimal to go Forceful first, and then Duo, and then, you know, whatever you have. But, um, yeah, th I think the Forceful was maybe drawn there. But uh, we'll have to see exactly what happens here. They shuffled back in uh, the Sangan, because that had to be the Sangan in hand. Uh, Gearfried gets switched to attack, attacks into the Dawn. Ring will come down on the Gearfried, so that will deal 1,800 damage to both players. And Dumbrick is down uh, 2,200 life points, so that is a reasonable gulf there. Um, the copies and duos are powerful, but they do cost life points to use. And in this format, you know, that life point cost can come up in the end. We also know that Soul has a ring here to ring the Dawn. Uh, oh, Raigeki hitting a Sasuke. Sasuke not quite good in this situation, unfortunately. Uh, now, Soul could just let the Dawn attack go through. Um, the idea being, like, you don't have cards in hand. If they mill from deck, like, who really cares, right? Uh, or you could just go for the ring on the Dawn uh, and say, like, you know, this puts you at 26. You gotta have something, right? Uh, and I'm sort of now up in life points compared to you. So, definitely different sort of philosophies about what to do on this ring turn here. Um, 
But we have to see what Soul's going to do now. Very tricky spot for Soul to be in, for sure. They're going to set one pass back to Dump Truck. And that Dawn just... Is it going to attack into the set? Is it just going to switch back to defense? Uh, if that set is a Dawn, then this could get really punished. But uh, is it going to attack in? And uh, will we get to see Dawn crash into a 1500 defense point Dawn? And then rip that last card of hand? No, we will not. We'll just see a Ring of Destruction come down on the Dawn. Dealing 1400 damage to each player. It leaves a lot of options for what the set could be. Call of Honor coming back on the Dawn as well. So that Dawn will be able to hit into the set. And it is a Witch. So Witch will be able to get a search here. Uh, and that can be very good for Soul. Uh, if you search at a bigger beater, you can hit over the Dawn. Uh, deal a bit of damage to Dump Truck. And also, you know, get rid of a Menace on field. Looks like they're going to search at a Fiber Jar though. So that's Telegraph the Fiber Jar. But Raigeki is gone. That's one of the biggest ways that uh, Dump Truck could get rid of the Fiber Jar. So, um... They're going to go for change on the Dawn. Oh, this is really smart. Uh, getting in some extra damage and also trying to rip the card out of hand. Unfortunately, the Io will stop that. So now the only play is set uh, Fiber pass back to Dump Truck. At least a card isn't getting ripped out of the hand with Dawn here. Uh, is Dump Truck going to pay for the Io? I mean, if you're just going to attack in with the Fiber, no reason to pay for the Io. Looks like that is indeed what they're just going to do. Fiber will shovel everything back into deck. And now we've got uh, a ton of stuff here. Yeah, he had Io the whole time. That's wild. I guess Soul did not really activate many spells here. Uh, Rhoda and Charity got pitched and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, I guess there's an argument for um, Dump Truck, like, not doing, not even sending the Graceful off the compy. But, uh, I mean, I think it worked out ultimately okay for them. You got to save Io for a very impactful play later on. And, yeah, I mean, now Fiber time indeed. Fiber again. Fiber super big in this format. Shuffling everything back. And now both players are down low. So, we've sort of reset the game state. Dumbrick not summoning out anything, so they might not have things to bring out. They might have a TT in the back row there. Uh, either way, a uh, bit of a ballsy play. Like, uh, I'm not I, I'm not sure I would do the same sort of thing if I was in their position. Um, but I think that this does, like, you know, if your opponent's got the Harpies or the Heavies, then they're probably going to use it to great effect anyways. So um, I think this does make sense, just, you know, setting those two. They could also have Io in the back row as well, uh, plus TT. Um, so either way. Uh, I think this is fine. They also could just have a hand of all spells and traps, in which case that's just unfortunate, but it does happen sometimes. Graceful pitching the mirror there. So I'll need the mirror if they've got the aggressive advantage right now. Um, so I think this makes a lot of sense. And uh, now Soul will potentially be going in for a big damage push. They got to decide on what else to discard here. Uh, got a lot of options. When you're playing a bit more of a combo-oriented warrior deck, uh, then you want to kind of keep the blast in hand for the gear freeze and things like that. Comfy coming down here as well. Dropping soul below dump truck. But uh, yeah, it looks like, yeah, they just bricked on cards here. They bricked on Jinzo, uh, Reborn, and Geki. I feel like of these, you probably send the Reborn because what uh, dump truck can do is they can just Geki your board, then Reborn whatever monster you was destroyed. So like, um, I think you just send the Reborn. Cuts them off from the most things. Um, so that would be my pick. But, you know, depending on what soul's got, they could go for something different here instead. But definitely a tricky spot to be in. They're going to pick the Reborn. I think that is correct. Uh, saying that Reborn. And uh, giving Dump Truck the Raigeki and the Jinzo. Uh, I think that's what you got to do. And they're going to bring out a Witch here as well to attack in for 11. Uh, Dump Truck could like ring that uh, if they've got ring in the back row. But like ringing a Witch is really awkward. But you are dropping down to the point where like soon your rings will be causing draws. Uh, so... Oh, and the Mirage on top of everything else. So Mirage will get to draw four here. And it's looking like Soul will be able to win the game. Uh, now again, oh, yeah, okay, good. <laughs> I was going to say, five is a bit too much there. Uh, it's not Morphing Jar. But uh, now, as I said before, like, oh, wow. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, going for a Snatch on the Witch. This could actually be the end of the game here. Because if this goes through, Dump Truck tributes out the Jinzo. But... Book coming down on the Witch there, sending that down, preventing the Snatch from pulling it off. Wow, the intense stuff. Um, yeah, that book came in really clutch for them because Dump Truck did have a path to victory uh, otherwise there. Dump Truck setting two in the back row. We know the last card in hand is Jinzo. And uh, it looks like the Mirage will be pitching here, pitching four cards from hand. So which four will get pitched is the question. Um, going to pick one to keep, picking this one here. Pitching a Gear Freed, a Forceful, 
a Exiled Force, and a Rota. All of which are pretty good hits uh, if you're dumb truck there. And when the Witch get flipped up, there is a bit of a discussion here. Like, um, you can't really TT it if you've got TT in the back row, because then Soul gets a search here, and then they just uh, bring out whatever monster they search and attack in that way. So uh, this, is, this is some tough stuff. You're also at risk of getting ringed here. If a ring is in the back row, popping that Witch, that's going to be a bit scary for you. So Reborn here as well. No monsters in Dump Truck's Grave to Reborn, but you can Reborn a uh, Gear Freed here. And again, you know... If you got TT in the back row, you might have to go for TT here, but this is a bit awkward because if you do that, then Soul gets a search. So it looks like they're just going to go to battle. This tells you that Soul probably does not have ring for the gear freed. Um, but this is a bit of an awkward spot. And yeah, that will just be the end of the game there. Very, very intense games. Uh, call in the back row as well. Ring in the, oh, ring was in the back row anyways, so it didn't matter there. Um, but yeah, intense stuff. Yeah, and uh, showing the power of Fiber Jars and showing the power of just, like, this format in general just super aggressive with all these rings um, and so many power cards running around. So, very, very powerful. Uh, ring was in the back row there, but, again, Ring doesn't really do anything against this board. So, yeah, Duo in the back row as well, but Duo was drawn. So, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's really, it, it's intense yada because the rings really uh, turn up the screws. Same with the Mirages. But the clock gets cut down a lot, so... Very, very good stuff here. And congratulations to Soul for grinding their way through the bracket, making it to the uh, top of the game there. So very, very good stuff uh, from Soul. I'm just going to put that in as the winner there. And uh, yeah, great, great stuff all around. I hope that you all enjoyed this tournament. Uh, you know, it, it's in a format that like no one really plays. Um, so, you know, I'm not really sure how interesting this would be to a lot of people, but I think it is really cool just to see people playing it uh see how they like it and uh yeah good stuff all around i think so uh i hope you all enjoyed this stream as always um and uh yeah i think i'm gonna call it here if you want to join in any future locals in the future uh then definitely head on over to the yjo from zero discord server the links in the description of the stream uh, also if you want to join in to uh monthly tournaments then we that's also where we hold them as well uh and yeah yeah, with that ring in the back row, Soul had a contingency to win as soon as he summoned Gear Freed. Yeah, and it makes sense why he'd wait, because then if Dumpfrak has booked in the back row, they'd just fire it on the attack of Gear Freed, and then you just bring it. And so, yeah. Um, so either way, Soul was winning that one. But uh, yeah, also leave a like on the video uh, if you enjoyed it. It really does help a lot. And also subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Um, we're at around basically 1.21 subs uh, K subscribers. Uh, so... Um, yeah, it would be really cool if we could make it to 1.3k uh, relatively soon. But uh, yeah, so I hope that you all enjoyed as always. And I'm going to call the stream here, I think. Um, but yeah, we hold these weekly. And uh, look forward for more videos and streams in the future. But uh, anyways, I've been Ben from YGF from Zero, and I'm signing off. So peace.